the direction of the uh, Township Board of Trustees and holding our meetings remotely. Uh, and that's also in line with a, a Public Act uh, 254 of 2020 and a county declaration of uh, health emergency in Wayne County. So that's why we're meeting remotely still. Um, the meeting will be able to be attended by, uh, of course, following the Zoom link. And if you are uh, participating as an attendee in the meeting, if there's an appropriate time to make comment, uh, you can raise your hand, use the chat function, or use star nine to participate. Uh, the meeting is also being broadcast on YouTube. Um, the meeting agenda tonight, as I said, is, is quite full, so we'll keep moving along. There will be uh, one correction to the agenda that I'll state and um, or set of minor corrections to the agenda under one item that I will state. And then there's going to be one public hearing regarding a special land use request by General Development Company uh, on behalf of uh, Kenworth CSM. And uh, then there's new business items, including a special land use review uh, for the same project, a preliminary site plan for the same project, uh, another preliminary site plan for a proposed uh, Burger King remodel on Belleville Road, a uh, temporary land use request for 8705 Belleville Road for uh, Atchison Ford and uh, discussion on outdoor dining and retail. And then finally, just a couple of miscellaneous administrative updates about a couple of projects before we go into uh, announcements and other updates. So it is a full agenda. So with that, I will turn this over to Chair Thompson. Thank you, Director Powers. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Charter Township of Van Buren Planning Commission meeting for Wednesday, October 13th, 2021. We'll start with the roll call, please. Jeff Jar. Here. Brian Kelly. Here. Callie Barr. Medina Atchison. Here, and I am in Van Buren Township tonight. Uh, for the record, I'm also in Van Buren Township. As well as I am. Brian Cullen. Here in, in, in Van Buren Township. Sherry Bud. Here in Van Buren Township. And Carol Thompson. Here, also in Van Buren Township. Thank you, Ms. Harmon. And we have an agenda before us. Director Powers, you have a correction for the agenda? I do, thank you, Madam Chair. And I do know uh, that Commissioner Barr just joined the meeting as well. Uh, Commissioner Great. Barr, are you in Van Buren Township by chance? I'm actually in Detroit right now. All right, thank you. Yep. So there, yes, there is one correction to the agenda, to the chair's question. I'll just show um, the correction here. There's a uh, some notes under new business item three that warrant a minor correction. This is actually a preliminary site plan review. And so instead of this being uh, the planning commission considering granting an extension of the site plan approval, this will be a typical site plan review process. So there will be following the presentation by staff, there will be a presentation by the applicant, public comment if there is any, uh, which is typical for the planning commission uh, for site plan reviews, even non-hearing ones, uh, non-public hearing site plan reviews, uh, planning commission discussion, and then planning commission uh, considers preliminary site plan approval. So if you could just keep in mind, it's the typical um, site plan review process under new business item number three. Great. Thanks, Director Power. Do we have a motion to approve the agenda with the change? Move to approve the agenda with the change to number three. Thanks. Support. Support Commissioner Jar, and it's a roll call vote, please. Medina Ashenson? Yes. Brian Cullen? Yes. Sherry Budd? Yes. Callie Barr? Yes. Brian Kelly? Yes. Jeff Jar? Yes. Carol Thompson? So the agenda is approved. We also have minutes from the regular meeting of September 8th of 2021. Is there a motion to approve the September 8th minute? Madam Chair, I move to uh, approve as submitted. Support. Support, I'm sorry, who supported? I did. Uh, Mr. Cullen, thank Sherry, you. Sherry, I don't care. Yes, <laughs> okay. no problem. And that also is a roll call vote, please. Brian Kelly? Yes. Kelly Barr? Yes. Medina Ashenson? Yes. 
Brian Cullen? Yes. Sherry Budd? Yes. Jeff Jar? Yes. Carol Thompson? Yes, so the minutes are approved. Thanks everyone. First item on tonight's agenda is a public hearing. Um, and the case is 21-021, General Development Company LLC Special Land Use Request. The request is for truck sales and repair by Kenworth CSM Companies, Inc. Applicant General Development Company LLC on behalf of the owner, Belleville North Marsh Ventures LLC, seeks to construct a plus or minus 59,820 square foot building with related site improvements for outdoor vehicle sales and vehicle showroom uses with accessory vehicle repair and service. The site is zoned C2, extensive highway business district, outdoor vehicle sales and vehicle service minor is a special land use in the C2 zoning district. So, Through the chair. Yeah, I think we have a request from Commissioner Bud first before we open the public hearing. All right. I would like to ask to be excused from public hearing item number one, new business item number one, and new business item two. That is property that the Bud Farm rents that I'm uh, familiar with and associated with. So I'm going to ask to be excused and I will um, move away from my computer and shut my video off. Great, thanks. So we have a request from Commissioner Barr to, I'm sorry, from Commissioner <laughs> Bud to be recused from the Kenworth items and I need a motion and then an approval. Motion, please. And can I move to excuse uh, Commissioner Bud from the uh, upcoming agenda item? Madam Chair, Great. I support that thanks. motion. Support, support Commissioner Jar and a roll call vote, please. Allie Barr? Yes. Medina Atchison? Yes. Brian Cullen? Sherry Budd? Yes. Brian Kelly? Yes. Jeff Jar? Yes. Carol Thompson? Yes. All right. Thanks, Ms. Budd. We'll see you later after these agenda items. And I would also now call for a motion to open the public hearing. Through the chair, I make a motion that we open the public hearing. Thanks, Commissioner Atkinson. Good support. Support. Commissioner Jar. And a roll call vote, please. Ryan Cullen? Yes. Medina Atkinson? Yes. Callie Barr? Uh, yes. Brian Kelly? Yes. Jeff Jar? Yes. Carol Thompson? Yes. Thank you. So the public hearing is now open. This is where we ask the um, attendees to comment on the applicant's request. This is for special land use for the Kenworth CSM application. And um, I'll throw the floor open now. Anyone in the audience to speak to this agenda item? Madam Chair, I'm just looking for uh, hands raised. And this is, uh, again, for anybody in the audience, this is an opportunity apart from the uh, team representing the applicant or anybody out there who may be a neighbor who received a notice, um, anybody who saw the ad in the paper or anybody else who's interested who is not on the Planning Commission and uh, who's not staff and who's not the applicant um, to uh, go ahead and um, or I should say not staff uh, presenting at tonight's meeting. Staff um, could participate as well, but mm -hmm. uh, anybody out there who's just got general questions about this project, comments, concerns. Um, and of course, if there's nobody out there tonight, we can continue to take comments uh, through, the, through the life of this project. But at this time, I don't see any comments in the chat or hands raised. Uh, and I'll give it a couple couple moments here, a couple seconds, uh, but I don't see anybody still. So um, I guess there are no public comments tonight. All right. Before we have a motion to close that public hearing, we'll re I will remind everyone that there is a chance to comment on the specific agenda items as we move into new business. 
So at this point, a motion to close the public hearing, please. Mr. Chair, I move to close the public hearing. Support. Commissioner Kelly, is that you? All right, and support Commissioner Atkinson and a roll call vote, please. Jeff Jar? Yes. Brian Kelly? Yes. Kelly Barr? Yes. Medina Atkinson? Yes. Brian Cullen? Yes. Carol Thompson? Yes. All right. Now we'll move right into new business item number one. This is still case 21021 General Development Company LLC, their special land use request. The request is for truck sales and repair by Kenworth CSM Companies Inc. Applicant General Development Company LLC on behalf of owner Belleville North March Ventures LLC seeks to construct a plus or minus 59,820 square foot building with related site improvements for outdoor vehicle sales and vehicle showroom uses with accessory vehicle repair and service. The site is zoned C2, extensive highway business district, outdoor vehicle sales and vehicle service minor is a special land use in the C2 district. The location is plus or minus 20.01 acre site uh, proposed to be a combination of land from two existing parcels located in tax parcel numbers 8306099000201 and 8306099000101 on the north side of the I-94 North Service Drive between DeWitt and Morton Taylor Roads. And I'm gonna to go to you, Director Power. You have some comments and um, some updates for us and then we'll hear what our professionals have to say. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I think it would be appropriate to defer the bulk of the analysis of this uh, first new business item on the special land use request to our principal planner and planning consultant, Vidya Krishnan, um, because I think that it weaves together a lot of good detail for the case. And then there's some additional items that, um, as you mentioned, there are some updates related to some additional comments that I have. So I can share my comments at the end of that report. Um, so at this time, I'd like to defer to Ms. Krishnan, and then I'll uh, speak briefly before we hear from the applicant. That's Thank, you, Thank you, Thank you, Director Power, members of the commission. As uh, Chairperson Thompson uh, summarized, the request is for special land use for outdoor vehicle sales and minor vehicle repair on a site that is zoned C2, Highway Business District. The zoning ordinance section 12.306 has specific general criteria for consideration of all special land uses. I shall summarize those in brief. The first criteria is if the proposed use will promote the use of land in a socially and economically desirable manner and will be uh, economically desirable for the adjacent property owners and the township as a whole. Now, this is a vacant piece of property that abuts a major freeway, which is I-94 traversing to the township. The proposed use is in keeping with the heavier intensity commercial uses that are envisaged for this area. So we find that the use of the land is appropriate and socially and economically desirable to it. Any impacts resulting from the use are mitigated through comments that are noted in our site plan review letter, which we will go over later in tonight's agenda. With regard to location at, for public convenience, the site is in close proximity to both I-94 and to Belleville Road, making it accessible to both the residents of the township and in the general region, uh, at a regional level customers as well. With regard to compatibility with the adjacent uses of land, the subject site is a 20 acre parcel that's going to be split off from a larger tract of land. It abuts vacant land to the east and north, which is part of the larger parcel. To the west is a national RV with its outdoor storage. And slightly further to the east would be Camping World with outdoor RV storage too. So we believe the outdoor display and storage of these uh, trailer cabs and the trucks that is proposed is in keeping with the existing pattern of development along the corridor. The Design of the site with the improvements that the applicant is proposing will enhance public health, safety, and welfare, which is one of the criteria that needs to be met. With regard to adequacy of public services and facilities to serve the site, any requirements with regard to utilities needs to meet approval of the township engineer, and I believe the applicant is working with the engineer at this time. 
The next criteria is that it will not cause injury to other property uh, in the neighborhood where it is located. Uh, we don't believe this is going to cause any injury economically or otherwise to any of the abutting properties since it does abut other similar uses with outdoor storage and heavy large vehicle traffic. No trees of five inches caliper or larger are going to be removed on the site. So we believe the use will meet conservation of natural resources and energy standard. The proposed use of outdoor vehicle sales and minor vehicle repair is within the provisions that require special land use approval and is in harmony with the purpose and conforms to the requirements of the C2 zoning district. And finally, the proposed outdoor vehicle sales is related to a valid exercise of the township's police power under which the planning commission reviews and makes a recommendation on the special mm -hmm. land use. In addition to these general criteria, the ordinance has specific approval criteria for outdoor vehicle sales listed in section 5.133. These are just a few conditions. Uh, most of them have been met, specifically a few corrections. First one is that all vehicles in the outdoor sales lot shall be operable. The applicant has made this notation on there. However, the term used is should instead of shall, shall makes it a mandatory requirement of the ordinance. So it is just a phraseology, but it is pretty important from a code enforcement standpoint. The applicant does comply with the parking lot layout uh, for the site in compliance with the ordinance. The access to the site is well over 100 feet from the intersection of any two streets. The applicant has added a note stating that no major repair or refinishing shall be done on this lot. And with regard to what qualifies as major repair or refinishing is clearly defined in the ordinance. And we have requested the applicant to lift that definition from our ordinance and put it on their site plan. That's the closest way to ensure compliance and enforcement. The applicant has included a note stating that no auto parts will be displayed or sold on the lot. Uh, Motorhomes and other large vehicles shall not be displayed in the front yard unless the vehicle is new. The applicant only shows new uh, display trailers within the front yard. However, a note needs to be added that these vehicles shall always be new. Um, the, I'm not sure if their use would sometimes encompass sales of other used can work trucks too. So adding of a clarification stating that any of the trailers displayed in the front yard are new is required. With regard to lighting, uh, we have addressed that in our site plan review letter. Uh, the site does not abut any residentially zoned or used properties in any direction. So screening or fencing with regard to that is not required at this time. The ordinance also requires that a permanent enclosed office space be provided within the facility. This is basically to ensure that this is in fact a commercial use and not an industrial use. And the applicant does meet that standard. Based upon a review of the proposal, we find that the proposal substantially meets the general requirements for special land use approval and also conforms to most of the requirements specific to outdoor vehicle sales. So it is our recommendation that the Planning Commission recommend approval of the proposed special land use for outdoor vehicle sales and minor vehicle repair to the Township Board of Trustees subject to correction of the notation regarding inoperable vehicles in the outdoor sales lot and verification that no large vehicles will be displayed in the front yard unless the vehicle is new, followed by site plan approval. I would be happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Christian, for your recommendation and for clarifying the standard. Director Power, get back to you. Sure, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'd like to just highlight a couple of the points uh, that were made by uh, Ms. Krishnan. Uh, with respect to the nature of the use, um, it is very important to kind of acknowledge the unique uh, business that is being proposed here. It's something that we don't often see. It involves um, truck sales and accessory truck repair. And so it's really important to establish that, uh, first of all, to recognize the underlying zoning is for C2, which is a commercial zoning district. And in recognizing that, it's uh, been a consistent theme throughout staff's review of this project and, and discussions with the applicant that uh, there's a, a need to demonstrate the prominence of the commercial aspect of the use. I say that because a standalone use that would involve 
uh, major truck repair uh, in and of itself or any, any truck repair in and of itself um, would not be categorized the same way. It'd be more of an industrial use. But uh, one thing that has been uh, analyzed and, and um, the information has been refined in the plans over the course of the various submittals is that this is uh, clearly a uh, predominantly sales-based use. It involves predominantly, uh, primarily sales of new trucks with uh, some sale of truck parts and uh, accessory portion of the site is uh, used for truck repair, even though it's a, a, a significant footprint of the building, it's still a very much accessory component of the overall uh, revenue splits of the site. And so I uh, had submitted a additional letter to the packet that was provided. It includes some recommended conditions uh, regarding, uh, first of all, that there are notes uh, on the site plan or on a letter in CSM Kenworth letterhead that uh, there's a description of the revenue splits for new truck sales, new truck parts sales, and truck service sales uh, based on data from an existing facility. Uh, that has been provided by the applicant. There's a letter uh, submitted from the applicant uh, dated October 8th that shows those splits for a Dearborn location uh, with 67% of uh, the revenues coming from um, new truck sales from October of 2019 through September of 2020. Uh, and there's some other data on that data on that letter as well um, that support the, um, the requirement. I also uh, requested that there's an addendum to the site plan which shows um, trucks being parked for service, uh, having limits in where they can be parked. Uh, so it, it's a matter of making sure that as uh, Ms. Christian stated in her report, the frontage of the property is reserved for new vehicle display and sales, and uh, the portion of the property used for truck parking should really be reserved to the areas adjacent to those service bays. So uh, the applicant volunteered to limit their uh, truck parking to the west and north ends of the site and not to exceed 50% uh, of the overall uh, truck parking spaces uh, to be used for trucks staged for service. Uh, which was another re recommended uh, condition in my report. Um, and finally, as uh, Ms. Christian stated, that the applicant shall note no dismantled truck parts will be stored outdoors. Uh, and so there were some uh, relatively recent submittals provided by the applicant that demonstrate um, these conditions. Uh, my, my request was that these conditions be um, Pro provided and the submittals be made prior to this uh, moving on to the Township Board of Trustees for review. So I did send this electronically to the Planning Commission um, and just briefly so that um, they can be seen uh, in relation to tonight's meeting. Um, Here's the letter that was provided uh, showing the revenue splits. And let's see, let me just stop my share so that I don't... Uh, get too much uh, visual clutter on the screen, but um, there's also a submittal that shows hatched areas where the um, trucks will be limited on the site. And let me just get the right view angle to show those. Uh, so you can see the hatched area on this image, and uh, with most of these plans, there's uh, two pages for each site plan because it's a large site uh, extending north to south. And so you can see the areas adjacent to the north end of the building and the west end uh, that would be reserved for trucks that are being parked for service. Um, and there's also uh, additional notes on this submittal uh, regarding the uh, lack of dismantled truck parts stored outdoors on the site. Uh, so just a few extra comments to reiterate um, the importance of establishing the sales and new, new truck sales as the primary use of this site with accessory service, as you would see in other uh, dealerships. And with that, I will now um, turn this back to the uh, Planning Commission. Uh, and by the way, there are images that I'll, I'll be sure to have up during the site plan review component of this review, but I might just leave this with a overall um, view of the site. But Madam Chair, if you would like to just see the uh, faces of the planning commissioners, just let me know and I'll stop this screen share. Okay. 
Great. Thanks. Thanks, Director Power. It's helpful to um, have you outline those conditions that qualify the applicant for their work in the C2 district. Um, and we have the applicant with us tonight. Is there uh, anything the applicant wants to tell us on the special land use request? Uh, yes, through the chair, uh, Bruce Brickman and uh, Teresa Bruce and Jeff Minter are all here representing the applicants group, so they uh, they can speak to their project. And uh, if any of you would like to uh, share your screen, we can make that happen as well. Uh, this is Bruce Brickman from General Development. Um, the picture that Jeff put on the screen gives you a great idea of the First class nature of what Kenwood CSM wants to build here um, with the um, curtain wall glass facades, um, like any showroom. Um, I would suggest you think of this to some degree like a automobile um, dealership showroom, um, only the difference being uh, you have large Kenworth tractors as opposed to um, uh, Lincolns or Cadillacs or Toyotas um, on the lot as this building will be functioning the exact same way any car dealership would function. Uh, Kenworth CSM is the largest Kenworth dealership in the country. They have facilities like this or similar to this in all different parts of the United States. If there's no other questions, I'll let you go on with the special land use. Great, thanks, Mr. Brickman, I appreciate it. Um, anyone in the audience? to speak on this agenda item. Director Power, I'll ask you to let me know if there are hands raised or questions posted. Yep, Madam Chair, I see no hands raised at this time. On that case, I'm gonna go directly to planning commission discussion for the special land use request. Any questions or comments from any of the planning commissioners? Uh, Madam Chair, Mr. Commissioner Jar, uh, I had a, a couple of questions uh, about the specific repairs, uh, the repair facility. I do want to start by saying it's a nice looking facility. I, I like the rendering. It looks good. It looks nice. I, I just have some questions about the repair, uh, the repair aspect. Uh, I know that we've put some recommendations into uh, the staff letter uh, regarding truck parking. I want to know if there's a distinction between, uh, is there a distinction between just the tractor component of the tractor trailer uh, versus what a truck is in our ordinance? And I'm going towards, uh, we are making recommendations for parking the trucks under service in the back. Does that necessarily include any trailers that may come in with the truck? Can the trailers be parked out front? Um, Dan, do you want to pull up the site plan again to answer Jeff's question? Because there are designated spaces way in the back if there was a trailer. Most of this Jeff jar is obviously just tractors. It is possible that some poor uh, over the road driver experiences a service problem, you know, in the middle of I-94 with his trailer attached. Um, the majority of times tractors are coming in just for routine service, but that's been accommodated. If Dan pulls up the site plan, you will see in the rear of the site, there are a handful of spaces in case there are trailers attached. In the very north end of the site where that, uh, the hand just was, Dan, no, a little farther north, right there. Uh, th those are sized for trailers in case trailers came in. Understood. Thank you, sir. Uh, and I'd, I'd like that clarified in the, uh, just, I would might, like, want to make sure that the language is correct, that we, we are ensuring that the trailers are in back. I see there's an area for them. I want to make sure that they, they, you understand they have to go back there. Uh, my next question, and I suppose for the applicant is, uh, let's say an operator, an owner operator does run into a problem and comes in with the truck and the trailer, what uh, provisions or constraints do you have on operators overnighting in their tractor on the property? 
So um, this is Jeff Mentor with CSM. I, I can kind of speak to that. Generally speaking, we do not allow drivers to stay in their in their tractors at all. Uh, we prefer not to have people in their tractors for numerous reasons, from security standpoint as well as liability. So we generally make arrangements for them with their companies to get a hotel room and get them an Uber or a shuttle down to the, the local hotel and strongly discourage that. Obviously, if somebody pulls in in the middle of the night and chooses to sleep in their sleeper because that's what they did when no one was there, we can't control that. But it's not something that's normal practice nor condoned. And similarly with the trailer parking, the last thing we want in the front of our building is somebody's trailer. They, they aren't the most attractive thing. We we would have more problem with our staff if trailers end up in front probably than you will. <laughs> yeah, I thought that might be the case, but I, I do have to ask. <laughs> uh, Additionally, for overnight storage with those trailers uh, or up to 48 hours of storage with the trailers, if someone does roll in with a trailer, uh, I mean, you do have a parking area for it. Do you have any controls over those can be stored on the premises overnight? Let's say a truck and trailer rolls in with a hazmat load uh, and is broken down and seeking service. What are your policies on storing it on premise? Generally speaking, we don't have anything specific in writing that I'm aware of. The, the hazmat materials are generally a responsibility of the load carrying company. So they have to secure those if they're a hazardous material. So they generally can't leave those behind. They'll have to arrange for a second power unit to get that load back underway. Okay. I, uh, I will turn it over to the other commissioners. I don't have any other questions with regard to the special land use at this time. Thank you. Thanks, Commissioner Jar. Good questions. Other questions or comments from the Planning Commission? Anyone? Through the chair. Um, this, is, this is a question for the applicants. I am just inquiring as to why Kenworth has decided to build in Van Buren Township. I just want the background as to why you've decided to come to our community. So honestly, it was mainly location. We have a lot of customers in the Detroit area really prefer something along the interstate for visibility for obvious reasons, since most of our, our customers are driving down the interstate on a regular basis. So we were looking for a large parcel of land that's available in the, the greater Detroit area. And this was one that kind of struck our eye. And we'd, we'd heard that the township was relatively easy to work with from a, a business development standpoint. So we thought we'd give it a shot. Excellent. Thank you. Anyone else? I have a question for the applicant and, and I appreciate getting the letter that was submitted on October 8th, um, breaking down sales and parts and service. Um, but I just wanna understand better what the parts sales are. Are owner operators coming to this location to pick up parts that will then be worked on their equipment someplace else or is that part sales also related to the services that are being provided on site? It is a combination. So in the commercial vehicle, what's one of the, the minor differences between us and a car dealership is we do have more wholesale parts distribution than what the, the typical car dealership would. And that's primarily because some of the larger fleets have their own repair facilities. So the larger fleets that we sell trucks to have their own maintenance facility where they'll do the minor work and then They'll bring the more complicated stuff in to us when they have check engine lights, things like that, that their technicians can't handle. They'll bring those in. So we do provide parts to those customers as well. Okay. Thank you. All right. One more time. Any other questions or comments before we consider action on this request? Are you ready to consider a motion on the special land use? This would be a recommendation to township board. Here. Commissioner Kelly. I'd move to recommend to the Township Board of Trustees to grant special land use approval to the applicant General Development Company LLC for outdoor vehicle sales and associated uses at the properties located at parcel IDs 83060990002001 and 83060990001. 001 on the north side of the I-94 service drive based on the analysis and subject to the conditions detailed in the McKenna memorandum dated September 22nd, 2021 and the Van Buren Township Board, uh, 
Director Powers Memorandum dated October 6, 2021. Great, support. Chair, I support that motion. Thanks, Commissioner Jar. And it would be a roll call vote, please. Callie Barr? Yes. Medina Atchison? Yes. Brian Cullen? Yes. Brian Kelly? Yes. Jeff Jar? Yes. Carol Thompson? Yes, thank you. So the special land use goes forward to the Van Buren Board of Trustees. And we will move to item two, which uh, same applicant, General Development Company, LLC. This time we are considering a preliminary site plan. The request for truck sales and repair by the same applicants, Kenworth CSM, Inc., Applicant General Development Company, LLC, and on behalf of owner, Belleville North Smart Ventures, LLC. This is to construct a plus or minus 59,820 square foot building, related site improvements for outdoor vehicle sales and vehicle showroom uses with accessory vehicle repair and service. The site is zoned C12, extensive highway business. It is a plus or minus 20.01 acre site proposed to be a combination of land from the two existing parcels located at not, sorry, not from the two, from two existing parcels located at tax parcel numbers 8306099-0002001 and 8306099-0001001 on the north side of I-94 North Service Drive between DeWitt and Morton Taylor Roads. And we will hear from township staff and then our professionals, Director Power. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, at this point, I would like to defer the comments to our typical uh, sequence of reviewers. We have first the uh, planning consultant, Vidya Krishnan, and we have Paul Kamer, uh, the township engineer, and uh, Fire Marshal Lenahan's report is also included, and I can summarize the findings of that report. So I'll put the uh, plan set on the screen for Vidya uh, to go ahead with her report. Thank you. Thank you, Director Power, members of the commission. As Chairperson Thompson summarized, once again, this is a C2 extensive highway business district, and you had just made a recommendation on the requested special land uses. At this time, we are reviewing the site plan and the site design details. The applicant has been working with the township for the past couple of months at least, and most of the site plan related details are at this time on the site plan with the exception of one small notation, just all of the township, county and required state permits must be placed somewhere on the site plan. As mentioned, this parcel is being created by a lot split from a parent parcel that is approximately 68 acres in site. The lot split will be made a condition of site plan approval. And the applicant can complete that before or after final site plan approval prior to start of construction. With regard to dimensional requirements, there's no minimum lot size requirement in the C2 district. The proposed building meets all of the required setbacks for the district and the proposed building height at 37 feet to the tallest point is well within the maximum permitted height limit of 40 feet for the C2 district. With regard to location of curb cuts, the site plan proposes a single uh, director power. Could we Please go to a close-up of the site plan that is along I-94 service drive frontage so the planning commission could see better. The plan proposes a single 32-foot wide access drive from I-94 service drive. The applicant has submitted a truck circulation diagram that shows the movement of trucks throughout the site and it is acceptable to the fire department and the township engineer. Now, if you look at the truck circulation diagram, it also includes turn movement around the whole of the front side of the building the applicant is not intending to have truck circulation in this area. The circulation pattern is included in order to show that if necessary, fire trucks and larger vehicles can also maneuver to the front side of the building. Now in the township master plan, there is a vision for a road to go along the east property line of this parcel, straight through the parent parcel up to the north end of the parent parcel and eventually connect through a stub back to Belleville Road. That is in the larger scheme of the township's vision for this area, there is going to be a new connecting road that will create an L-shaped connection back from Belleville onto the service drive. The applicant is keeping this parcel contained at this time. We had, however, required that a cross-axis 
point to be shown somewhere along the east property line so that in the future, if a full roadway comes to the east of this parcel, the applicant can connect and provide a secondary means of ingress and egress from the site. The applicant has shown on this particular uh, site plan, if you scroll further, uh, to the top, there is, uh, Director Power can point it out, yes, there is in red, that is where the cross axis is shown. That needs to be fine-tuned a little bit because it's right now shown going through a landscape island. Any uh, future cross axis point shown, we are not sure when that road will go through, but that road will be essential in order to develop the rest of the parent parcel and the back of the parent parcel. So the cross axis point needs to be more clearly defined than what it is shown here, but that is something uh, we can address before final site plan review and approval. With regard to sidewalks, the site plan includes a five foot wide sidewalk along the site's I-94 service drive frontage, but it actually stops short of the west property line. There is a small stretch where there is no sidewalk and the applicant previously stated that due to great changes, there is an existing county drain ditch along their southwest corner of their property. And the applicant stated that it is not feasible to install a sidewalk because of the drain crossing. Now the township engineer has noted that a sidewalk connection of some sort is feasible. It's not impossible. It definitely is not going to be as simple as just putting on a five foot wide sidewalk. But if you can see the sidewalk abruptly stops over there and doesn't go further to the west. So at the time, however, since there is no sidewalk right now to the west of this property. The applicant has indicated their willingness to pay into a township sidewalk fund for construction of the sidewalk at a future date. In the future, if a sidewalk is connected to the west of this property, the amount of money the applicant has in deposited in the sidewalk fund can be used to engineer a, a crossing across this county drain, which will take some work, but it can be done at this time. We, we would advise that the Planning Commission accept a payment into the sidewalk fund at this time only if it is determined by the township engineer that a sidewalk is not feasible at this time. In that case, we are willing to defer it. Uh, the plan also proposes sidewalks along the front side of the building and to the employee patio, which is shown on your plan just to the west side of the building. Our recommendation is that crosswalk connections be stripe on the pavement wherever the sidewalk crosses it so that employees or even customers have safe crossing across these main drive aisles which typically have trucks and trailers driving through it. With regard to parking and loading, all of the spaces on site meet the ordinance requirements and they are being double striped. Based on the ordinance requirement for parking spaces for the service area, the office and the repair uh, facility, a total of 105 spaces are required. The site plan shows a total of 110, including five handicap accessible spaces. All of the handicap accessible spaces are compliant with ADA requirements, including provision of two spaces that are van accessible. As a commercial building over 50,000 square feet, three usable loading spaces are required. And the three spaces would essentially be on they are shown two, are, one is shown on the east side of the building, one is shown on the west side of the building, and one is shown inside the building itself. This is acceptable because that is the area where the vehicles will be coming in either to repair or to load and do their unloading activity. Our zoning ordinance has got significant requirements for landscaping, including landscaping along the frontage, within the parking lot, parking lot islands, loading, screening, I'll not go into all of the requirements in detail. I will just summarize the key points over here. Based on the ordinance requirement, a specific amount of deciduous trees, ornamental trees, and shrubs are required along the site's I-94 service drive frontage. Uh, Director Power, could you kindly put up the landscape plan on the site along the frontage? Now, the applicant is deficient in the shrub requirement along the frontage by 64 shrubs. The reason the applicant does not want to put the shrubs in is because they might obstruct view of the trailers that are on display, which is what the business is about. They're trying to display their trailers for sale. Instead, the applicant is proposing a hedge of ornamental grasses and perennials along the frontage of the site instead of shrubs to maintain visibility of the building and the parking they have proposed. If you could zoom in a little bit, the 
wavy line that you see between the trees along the frontage. Those are the ornamental grasses and uh, perennials in lieu of shrubs. Um, the Planning Commission does have the discretion to grant the smart, if you could scroll, the, take the cursor slightly down. Yes, that curved line, baby line that you see next to the trees is actually the ornamental grasses and the perennials that the applicant is proposing in lieu of shrubs. We believe the proposed landscaping meets the intent of the ordinance. We basically want to provide some kind of green vegetation in the frontage that makes the site look attractive, while at the same time granting the applicant the visibility they want. We find it acceptable. However, the Planning Commission needs to grant this deviation or flexibility in application of the ordinance. With regard to interior landscaping, uh, there are several places where the landscape islands within the site are not in compliance with the minimum area of 360 square feet. Those islands need to be widened in order to comply with the minimum size requirements. With regard to display area um, buffering, uh, the Planning Commission does have the ability to modify some of the display area uh, buffering. Putting in too many of the buffering species will essentially block the display, which would defeat the purpose of what the applicant is attempting to accomplish. In lieu of a standard buffer screen, uh, the applicant is willing to put in, if you look at the east right side of your property, right side of your screen, east end, the applicant has shown these triangular projections for the display area. These triangular projections will be planted with perennials and lawn, and it's sort of an extension of a landscape island, but more of a break in the uninterrupted row of display vehicles. We believe this design is appropriate and provides for some relief from the straight series of vehicles, trailers that are parked here. Our recommendation is that one of these kind of triangular projections also be included along the frontage of the site where there are trailers, but there is no such triangular projection shown. It helps relieve the single series of trailers parked along the front. The applicant for the most part has met all of the other landscaping requirements. Any landscaping around the detention pond is of course subject to review and approval by Wayne County. A tree removal permit is not required at this time because no trees over five inches diameter are being removed from the site. With regard to lighting, uh, there isn't a photometric plan in the electronic set of the site plan that we reviewed. So my letter says that there is no photometric plan. Apparently there is a copy of the photometric plan in the sheet set that you received. In any case, I have noted what was the information that was provided on the original site plan. We will ensure that the lighting plan meets the ordinance requirement when this plan comes back before you for final site plan approval. The applicant has submitted detailed elevations for each of the facades and the structure is to be constructed of insulated metal panels, split face block, ACM panels, aluminum, glass curtain wall systems and corrugated horizontal metal siding. The color, color scheme is black, gray and brown. And uh, the applicant, we had some discussions with the applicant regarding making the building more commercial in appearance than industrial. And in response, the applicant has added in windows along the front uh, if you look at the front facade would be the one on the bottom of your screen, the south elevation. So the addition of the windows on top, uh, addition of some amount of brick and the landscaping in front. Actually, if you see a colored rendering, it probably gives you a better uh, idea of what this building is going to look like. We had suggested the applicant bring building material colors and samples to this meeting. Uh, the applicant, I believe, is not yet ready to finalize those. However, the materials that are shown can be finalized and shown to the Planning Commission before final site plan approval. The plan does include a dumpster enclosure on the site with uh, two units and details are in compliance with the ordinance requirement. The site plan proposes a single monument sign along the frontage. Uh, it shows a one foot six inch gray base with a six inch smaller red band above it. Um, the proposed materials of that sign have not been identified. Now, according to our ordinance, a monument sign is defined as something having a solid 24 inch base that needs to be constructed of masonry, brick or similar material. And there can be no separation between the sign face and the base. So the base alone has to be at least 24 inches in vertical height and the width of the sign has to be the same as the base of the sign. So the applicant needs to submit a revised sign design that meets what the ordinance definition of Kenworth is. In addition to it, at this time, the wall signage can work as we proposed, as you see on the rendering. 
No fencing is being proposed around the site at this time. The applicant doesn't believe it is necessary. Based on our review of the ordinance, most of the major details required by the ordinance have been addressed at this time. There are a few items on which the Planning Commission needs to grant flexibility, and there are a few additional notes and clarifications that need to be provided. However, these are not things that need to hold a preliminary site plan approval. So it's a recommendation at this time that the Planning Commission grant preliminary site plan approval to Kenworth CSM to be located at the site as uh, referenced in the agenda, subject to the 13 conditions that are listed in our review letter dated September 22nd of 2021. I would be happy to answer any questions or provide clarification on any of the site plan items. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Christian, for a thorough review. I think before we have questions and comments, we'll go to Fishbeck's recommendation. Mr. Kamer. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, okay, so based on, uh, um, as we note in our letter dated September 21st, 2021, um, and with all preliminary site plan reviews at this time, uh, Fishbeck and the Water and Sewer Department examines and reviews the feasibility of the engineering aspects of the site design, but will not conduct a full engineering review until the engineering uh, application is submitted. Uh, it should be noted that the applicant has had multiple discussions with the township and the township staff uh, regarding the layout of the site and the impact of the site utilities to the overall master plan uh, for the township infrastructure, as Ms. Krishnan uh, mentioned. Uh, some minor comments um, of the site plan and the, the general plans. Um, first comment that uh, we'd like to see covered is that the applicant needs to show an overland flow route for the entire site, meaning the pre and post drainage patterns uh, must be determined and verified to show that all water flowing through the site is accounted for, um, showing existing drainage patterns um, and where they are maintained through the site. Uh, minor other comments which can be fixed uh, on the plans as they get into engineering review are also listed in the letter. One of the big items or main discussion points that we had with the applicant and with township staff was the addition of the water main. So existing water main based on the GIS records indicates that in front of this site along the I-94 service drive, there is no public water main adjacent to or within the area of this development, including the parcels to the east between this parcel and Camping World and then to the west towards uh, the National RV Center. Um, there is an existing 12 inch water main that runs east and west along there um, in front of those two properties, but nothing currently in front of the Kenworth proposed property. The future, the Township Water Distribution Master Plan indicates that a water main along the I-94 service drive is recommended to be connected between the two stubbed ends from Camping World to National RV which will help improve the overall reliability and the redundancy of this system. Additional development of master plans indicate a potential for the roadway, as Ms. Krishnan mentioned, uh, running north and south along the east side of the property for future development and utility extension. The applicant, uh, as far as the proposed water main is concerned, the applicant has worked with the township and township staff to propose a layout that will allow for future expansion without disruption of the operations of the Kenworth site. The applicant plans to tap the existing water main that runs along the I-94 service drive in front of the Camping World property and extend that water main approximately 600 feet, bringing the water main up to their site so that they can then um, loop the water main around the Kenworth site and um, add in the five required hydrants um, for the site. When the loop is installed on the site, um, they will tap the loop with a eight inch ductile iron uh, fire suppression line and a two inch water service line. Um, so just to, to give an idea, the, the, the main talking point um, of what we discussed during preliminary talks 
was that Kenworth had originally looped, was wanted to loop the water main around the building interior and inside their property, essentially within the limits of their parking lot. And what the township and township staff had requested, which the applicant has now um, has done on their plans, is to actually run the water main along the eastern property line so that upon a future expansion of a roadway going north and south or expansion of the adjacent properties and development of the adjacent properties, those properties can then loop into the existing water main without disrupting the operations of the Kenworth site. Um, and as uh, Director Power is kind of showing, you can see the red outline that goes up the east side of the property and then loops back around the back side of the building. So this was an accommodation um, made by the applicant to ensure that the township can um, expand the water main for future development on the east side of the property. Uh, additionally, the applicant has extended the water main north along the eastern property line, not only to extend hydrant coverage to the north up um, near where Commissioner Jar had questioned about the trailer parking, um, but also they have extended the water main easement on the north side um, not the water main installation itself, but the easement so that in the future, again, if we extend or the township extends the roadway, that the township and additional developers can come onto their property, install the water main, and continue the water main to the north without disrupting the Kenworth uh, operations. Um, the other area that I would like to discuss as far as the water main is concerned is the water main along the I-94 service drive. Van Buren Township standards indicate that new developments shall install from boundary line to boundary line and add water main stubs at the property lines or at locations de designated by the township engineer for future extension. The township requires that all water main be terminated by hydrant followed by gate valve and that the master plan does recommend this water main gap between Camping World and National RV to be connected, which would help the reliability and redundancy of the system. However, based on the topographic uh, nature of the site, this would require an additional 500 feet of water main to be constructed on the National RV property to the west. The, the main concern and, and what we discussed with the applicant and with the township staff was, as Ms. Christian mentioned with the sidewalk, uh, there is the quirk drain, a county drain that runs uh, along the Western property. Um, and in order for the township, or I'm sorry, for, for the applicant to extend the water main to the property line, they would have to encroach on an adjacent property um, in order to get a water valve and hydrant to end the water main loop, or they would have to extend onto the National RV um, site. So the recommendation from the engineers based on the engineering standards manual is that this does get ex extended. However, if it is determined by the township directors, uh, by the public service director, water and sewer director, and the planning and economic development director, the water main extension um, can be considered not feasible at this time um, and that the development and the requirement can be waived. In lieu of the water main extension, as they're showing on the north side, um, they the applicant has determined that they would provide an easement to the west as well for future expansion so that when additional water main in front of National RV is put into place, um, the township can come onto the, onto the Kenworth property and connect into the system uh, where their water main loop ends there on the southwest side of their property. Um, the other portions of our water main review is that no building or structure can be more than 250 feet uh, from a hydrant unless the fire department approval is given to do otherwise. And at this point, there is uh, a couple areas that this 
is not feasible based on the hydrant locations. And uh, the applicant will have to work with the township fire marshal to uh, provide that coverage unless it is waived. Ultimate decision will become from the township fire marshal. Um, okay, and I think that covers the water main on the site. Uh, sanitary sewer, there is a public 21 inch reinforced concrete sanitary sewer that runs along the I-94 service drive. Uh, the applicant is going to tap into that 21 inch sanitary sewer uh, along the frontage of the building as we can see um, that runs uh, off the front of the building and into the 21 inch there off of I-94 without any public sanitary sewer being installed as part of this project. Um, there are only minor comments that will be taken care of uh, during the engineering uh, application. Storm, as far as stormwater management is concerned, uh, the applicant indicates that um, the existing undeveloped property has no existing stormwater, um, no runoff, no surface flows, um, other than the roadside ditches along I-94. Um, and the applicant is proposing to capture all runoff via the system of inlets and storm sewer pipe, which then um, they have indicated they're gonna install a detention basin and sedimentation four bay uh, in the Northwest portion of their property uh, before ultimately outletting to the adjacent cork drain. Um, as always with this level of development and as we move forward, we request that uh, Wayne County gets involved at this point before the applicant submits to the township for engineering review. Uh, we don't like to have to go through the engineering review multiple times as Wayne County uh, makes different changes and different uh, decisions on the overall arching uh, stormwater management of the site. So we will work with the applicant and Wayne County to get things worked out before um, they submit back for final engineering approval. Um, final item on the list and Ms. Krishnan mentioned or, or discussed the sidewalk along the frontage. Uh, in general, when sidewalk is constructed along the frontage, um, of a development, limits should extend to the property line. But if it is determined by township staff that the proposed sidewalk extension either cannot be done in a safe manner or due to existing conditions or a uh, economically feasible manner, I guess we could say, the township can consider an alternate, alter, alternate payment method which uh, allows the applicant to um, buy in or, or deposit into a sidewalk fund um, for future development or future placement of that sidewalk. Uh, to, to expand a little bit on what Ms. Krishnan mentioned, right now adding a, a plane or, or a, a, just a five foot sidewalk across the frontage near that drain isn't, it's not feasible to just do it uh, in the terms that we think of of laying sidewalk. Is it feasible? Yes, to put in, you know, a, a large bridge or, you know, a pedestrian bridge? Yes, but again, the sidewalk wouldn't connect to anything and um, it would be economically a large, large uh, investment to add that into um, the project. We also looked at adding the sidewalk along the road frontage. But as you can see on the site plan, there is already guardrail protecting cars from the potential of entering into the cork drain and adding a sidewalk either behind the guardrail or between the guardrail and traffic is not feasible for safety reasons. So at this time, uh, we believe that terminating the sidewalk where it is and putting money into a sidewalk fund is the best option until the county decides to either rebuild the road and widen the culvert um, or uh, an ultimate path or pedestrian bridge is uh, installed uh, at this time. Other than that, the um, standard soil erosion and sedimentation control uh, must be implemented and Wayne County permit uh, must be 
acquired prior to uh, engineering approval. And uh, other than that, I apologize for the length of the review, but um, this is a big site and there's lots going on. So uh, we recommend that the Planning Commission grant Kenworth site uh, preliminary site plan approval based on engineering fe feasibility uh, subjects to the subject to the comments uh, we have listed in our letter dated September 21st, 2021. I'm happy to answer any questions or uh, add to any discussions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kamer. And thanks for good explanations on some very detailed areas that we have to be concerned with. I'm going to ask Director Power to summarize the fire marshal's letter in our packet. And then we'll hear from the applicant and get into our discussion. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, a few comments from the fire marshal at this point. Uh, the township engineer said this is a large site plan, so there's a lot to look at from their perspective. Uh, we do have a letter in the packet from the fire marshal that uh, includes comments uh, around water supply. Uh, one is that the maximum distance between fire hydrants shall not exceed 500 feet. Uh, the, higher, the hydrant at the entrance of the service drive needs to be relocated to the island north of that entrance. Uh, the distance from the hydrants on the northwest and northeast corners is over 500 feet to the mo northernmost parking area, and a fire hydrant will need to be added in that north parking lot. A fire suppression system will be required for the occupancy and a fire hydrant will need placed within 100 feet of the fire department's connection uh, to the building. And then with regard to fire department access, if there will be a security gate uh, in, installed at the entrance to the complex, uh, an approved access control device would be required. And uh, the required width of a fire department access road shall not be obstructed in any manner, including by the parking of vehicles. And uh, the, the final comment is that the review and approval by the authority having jurisdiction shall not relieve the applicant of the responsibility for compliance with those codes. Great, thanks Director Power. So let's hear from the applicant. What do you have to tell us about how you see the site plan working? Any information about your business? Um, any responses that you have to the reports that we've heard tonight? Uh, this is Bruce Brickman. I'll um, let Jeff speak in a minute in regards to um, the actual business. In regards to the uh, development of the project, I think um, the consultants have covered every aspect of it in their reports. So unless you have any specific questions for us as to um, the items that they brought forward, um, nothing really else to add to that. Great. Thanks so much, Mr. Brickman. Anything from you, Mr. Minter? No, just to appreciate the, the con consideration of being flexible with some of the requirements to maintain some of the visibility that we're after and definitely willing to continue working as, as we need to with some of those triangles on the frontage along there to break up the, the straight line of trucks and things like that if needed. So appreciate the consideration and understand why the regulations are there and we don't want to try to skirt around and we just want to try to make sure that we we maintain what we need to for business there too. Sounds great. Thank you. We always appreciate being able to work with the applicants to make sure the the nature of the ordinance is met and sometimes we do have to be all, all have to be creative. Um, so this would be a time to hear from anyone in the audience. I have something to add uh, in terms of the applicant side. Um, sorry, yes, Ms. Bruce. It's okay. My name is Teresa Bruce. I'm with General Development. Um, we talked about uh, the materials, building materials, and I just wanted to share my screen because I did not want to lug them all home from Southfield. So I do have a photo of the materials we were thinking. That's great. That's great. We'd love to see them. Okay, fantastic. Um, Bruce, you want to explain? You want me to run it through? Great talk. Okay, so we have the clear anodized um, ACM look that we show on our rendering near the front of the building. That's what you see here. We have the brown split face, tan call it split face black. We would then use the insulated metal panel. I just, I have this in terms of the profile, um, likely to be a silver or a brown. And then again, the clear anodized look for the windows. Great. 
Great, thank you. That's helpful. Yeah, our, our goal for the, the company, I know, you know, you've probably driven by truck dealerships previously that don't necessarily look great. Some of them are just plain steel buildings. Our, our, our look is really more towards the high-end car dealership front end of the building, even though we're selling large trucks and, and maintaining that same type of image on our property throughout the, the operations, not just at the, the opening either. Great. Thank you. I appreciate you saying that. We also appreciate um, high level architectural facades and design. So good. All right. Anyone in the audience on this agenda item? I'll check back. Planning commissioners, questions or comments for you know, for staff, for professionals, for the applicant. Madam Chair, I have two questions for the applicant. Great, thank uh, you. Mr. Brickman, are you planning on having any outdoor storage of anything other than new vehicles or vehicles under service? Any outdoor storage of parts? Uh, I'll let uh, I, Jeff Minter answer that one. Yeah, oh. I, I can answer that. We, we do not store parts outside the, from a security standpoint as well as just from a, a weather standpoint, it just doesn't work out. We end up damaging stuff more than we would be good. So. No, anything outside should just be stuff that's there for sale or coming in for service. Great. Perhaps you can answer my second question. Uh, is, is there a plan for an on-site truck wash inside the bays? Generally, we'll the have, we will have one labeled as a wash bay. We use a, a pressure washer if we need to, to, to degrease engines and things when they come in or an axle that was leaking oil that we need to reseal but we don't generally, we don't have an automated truck wash, anything like that. It's something where it'd be a, a heated pressure washer that we use that goes into a catch basin to separate out the, the stuff that comes off of the, the truck. And finally, a question from Mr. Kamer. Uh, is there any special engineering review that has to happen for the wastewater handling from the truck wash? Yeah, that would all go into um, whether it's, if depending on what Ms. Mr. Minter mentioned about degreasing and an oil water separator and things of that nature. Um, we'd have to, we have to, we'd have to discuss a little bit as to, to what, what goes into that and when, what exactly is being washed and, and whether or not it is considered dirty water and would go into the sanitary system. Um, but that would be all covered under the engineering uh, aspect or the engineering review of the site. For the, the final engineering review. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Those are the questions I had. Thanks, Commissioner. Other questions or comments from commissioners? Yes, uh, Madam Chair. Commissioner Cullen. Um, yes, I, this is for Mr. Kamer. Um, where the quirk drain, does that handle the the flow of water also from those folks that live along DeWitt, do you know? Because I know we have a water table problem over in that area. Uh, I don't know offhand uh, as far as what else dumps into the quirk drain. Um, like most sites, they're, you know, the engineering reviewer, the, the stormwater management um, will be metered per township standards so that it's released at a slower rate. Um, and, you know, what we are finding or what we've seen in the township and similar to like we discussed with the Hampton Manor retirement home is that many of these county drains, unfortunately, have not been maintained by the county. Um, but at this time, we haven't seen any major issues um, along this stretch, but again, it's a metered discharge from the site and we would make sure that they follow all the requirements per the Ben Beer and Township standards, which are more stringent than the Wayne County standards are for that uh, drain. Okay, because people talk about a hundred year rain. I think we experienced two or three of them this past summer. And uh, being concerned with the folks that live in that area that have had flood issues. That's all. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Cullen. Other questions or comments? I have a. Oh, I'm sorry, Commissioner Atkinson. Please go. 
Um, through the chair, I, I just wanted to make a, um, just, you know, my recommendation, my suggestion. Um, you know, I know it is the planning con at the planning commission's discretion to modify um, the ornamentals and the grasses and the hedges. Um, seeing how they're going to be displaying um, vehicles, or I should say, uh, tra not trailers, the trailers, I think, is the back of the truck, but more like the, is the tractor. You want to display those and you want to see those, and they probably want them to be seen from um, I-94 and people on the service drive. I'm fine with modifying that requirement as long as we do have the ornamental grasses and the perennials so that, of course, it it, we maintain our high standards and um, adhere to our ordinances. I'm, I'm fine with that modification. I just wanted to put that out there. Great, thank you. Thanks, that was actually one of the things on my list was to check with everyone and see because that does take a, our own approval to, um, to have substitution on landscaping. So anyone have concerns about the direction that the landscaping is, is heading to meet the needs of the applicant as well as meet the requirements of the township. Yeah, so. Madam Chair, I, I live across the freeway from the site and I believe I'll be seeing that building when I leave my subdivision. And I, I think that the landscaping substitution is appropriate. It, it's okay with me. Great, thanks Commissioner Jar. Madam Chair. All I right. Have, I, I have a real quick question. Uh, we're talking about doing the triangular projection kind of thing from the side lot and carrying that over to the front, correct? Correct. Yep, I'm, I'm good with doing that as well. Great, thanks, Mr. Kelly. Okay, I had a, a question. I think I'm gonna ask Mr. Kamer to, to consider this first. I just need a clarification. I need to understand on the sidewalk. Are we talking about the applicant putting in the five foot sidewalk across most of the frontage, but the discussion is to wait, uh, it, the, the discussion is to consider um, a deposit into the sidewalk fund to wait to figure out how to handle sidewalk or pedestrian crossing over the drain. I wanna make sure that we're looking at sidewalk on some of the frontage in part because we have had uh, pedestrian accidents on that North Service Drive, including a fatality that really hit the community really hard. So I wanna make sure that wherever we can, we are providing safe pedestrian access. I know it's a North Service Drive. I know it's a higher um, uh, traffic patterns and, and speed, but I want us to, to err in, the, in caution and safety wherever we can. So can you help me understand where we're at with that, Mr. Kamer? So yeah, the applicant will extend the sidewalk as far so from the eastern border of the property all the way across as far west as they can feasibly go without um, getting into the slopes of the drain in that area when we when we discussed with them about um, the possibility of of trying to go around the drain and over the existing culvert the only real feasibility was to put the sidewalk next to the road, which we had, you know, all determined that it was better to not put people in that uh, space and to wait until the extension of the sidewalk um, could be done and then extended across the uh, property of the national RV site. Great. Thank you. Thank you. That's really helpful. Sounds like you've got it covered. All right, final call for questions or comments from planning commissioners or the audience. Then before us is to consider uh, preliminary site plan approval. Is there a motion? Madam Chair. Commissioner Jarr. Well, at this time, I, I would move to grant the applicant uh, General Development Company, LLC, on behalf of the owner of Belleville North Marsh Ventures, LLC, the preliminary site plan approval for the construction of a 5982 square foot building with related site improvements for outdoor vehicle sales and vehicle showroom uses with accessory vehicle repair and service, 
at the site located on the proposed 20 acres combined from the tax parcel numbers listed in the agenda on the north side of the I-94 service drive between DeWitt and Morton Taylor Roads based on the analysis and subject to the conditions detailed in the letter of staff dated October 6th. McKenna letter dated September 22nd, Fishbeck letter dated September 21st, and the undated fire report that was submitted along with the meeting's packet. I didn't see a date on that letter. Okay, great. Good motion. Is there support? I'll support. Thanks, Commissioner I, Cullen. And it's a little... I'm sorry, oh, we have a discussion point before we take a roll call vote. Ms. Christian? Just a small correction, uh, if Commissioner Jar would entertain it. Uh, McKenna letter dated September 22nd, condition number five, uh, you could change it to contribution into the township's sidewalk fund for the portion of the missing sidewalk along the site's frontage. My comment currently in the letter says that if it's feasible, but I believe the township engineer has clarified that it's not really feasible at this time. So you could just say contribution to the township sidewalk fund. And that is my intent. Uh, so noting condition five as stated by uh, Ms. Krishnan, uh, that's the motion. Great, we've got it now and uh, with that small change, Commissioner Cullen, you accept? For your oh, second? absolutely. Excellent. In that case, a roll call vote, please. Mindy Ashenson? Yes. Brian Cullen? Yes. Callie Barr? Yes. Brian Kelly? Yes. Jeff Jar? Yes. Carol Thompson? Yes. So you have preliminary site plan approval. Thanks so much to the applicant. It was a lot of discussion and a lot of information for us to wrap our heads around tonight. We appreciate you being here with us and we look forward to seeing you when you come back for final. Thank, Thank you very you. much. We appreciate all of your time and energy we, in this project as well. We appreciate Thank all you. your help and we look forward to finishing this up. Great. Thanks. Thanks so much. Take care. Thank you all. All right. We are. Oh, let me see if we can bring Commissioner Bud back. And we'll move to item three, which is case 21019, Burger King drive through preliminary site plan. The applicant, Interplan LLC, on behalf of owner, Robin Net In Investments LLC, seeks preliminary site plan approval to construct a secondary drive through lane, along with landscaping and architectural improvements associated with the remodel of the Burger King restaurant. The location is 11550 Belleville Road, Tax parcel 8308199 That is on the west side of Belva Road between the South Interstate I-94 Service Drive and Venetian Avenue. And let's see, Director Power, I'm gonna go to you. Do you have anything to guide us through before we hear from the McKenna and Bishop? Thank you, Thank you, Madam Chair. The, uh, the letters from the uh, McKenna and the McKenna and Fishbeck letters, as well as the fire marshal's letter, have a comprehensive review uh, within them. So I'm going to just defer to hearing from our consultants on their reports. And I do have uh, site plans and renderings I can show as part of that. And then also we do have uh, some members of the team in attendance here. I believe that would be Andrea, uh, Uli, and see if I can figure this out. If anybody else on the Burger King team is uh, attending who is not yet a panelist, just go ahead and raise your hand. Uh, but I'll put the site plan up on the screen and then we can hear from our uh, reviewers. Thank you. Great, thanks Director Power. So Ms. Christian, we'll go over to you, McKenna's recommendation. Thank you, Madam Chair. The Burger King site is currently zoned C2, once again, which is extensive highway business district. It also happens to be located within the B-Rod, the Belleville Road overlay district. The zoning ordinance permits drive-through restaurants as a special land use. However, this is a site with an existing drive-through, so it already has special land use approval. It does not need another one. This is a complete remodel of the site, so all it needs is site plan review. All of the required site plan details have been provided at this time. The building 
complies with the required setbacks for the district and the maximum height permitted in the C2 district. With regard to access and circulation, the site has two curb cuts along Belleville Road. There is a north access drive, which is about 27.7 feet and will function as a two-way access drive. The south access drive is 20.27 feet and will function as an exit only from the sign. The applicant is adding signage to ensure that the circulation pattern on the sign is clear. There is a cross access from the, at the northwest corner of the site, which connects to I-94 South Service Drive through the Shell gas station that is to immediately to the north of the site. There is an existing stub on the property to the south, which is like a, a nursing home healthcare facility. The stub connects on the southwest corner of your uh, screen. If you look at the site plan, there is a little stub. It is currently blocked off with a curb. We had previously suggested that maybe the applicant could eliminate that curb and establish the cross axis so that there'll be a straight connection from that property to I-94 service drive also. However, the applicant had, upon review, mentioned that any vehicles that are heading north from the site to the south up that access drive will be directly in conflict with the two drive-through lanes. Uh, it might not really be a safe crossing over which we concur with. While cross access between properties is always desirable, in this case, it will not be in the interest of public safety. Having cross access is actually likely to create accidents in the drive-through rather than not. So at this time, we are supportive of the applicant's decision to keep that cross access stub as it is currently blocked up with the landscape island. The site has a five foot wide sidewalk along its Belleville Road frontage and a sidewalk connector to the front entrance of the building. Um, the Belleville Road Overlay District has specific design standards for how the pedestrian crosswalk needs to be in the piano key design. The applicant is providing that uh, and is meeting the requirements for pedestrian access as required under b -Law. All of the parking spaces on the site meet the ordinance requirement and they are going to be restriped with double striping as required by the ordinance. With regard to the requirement for parking spaces, the subject site provides more than the number of required parking spaces. They require a total of 38 parking spaces uh, and two longer parking spaces for recreational vehicles. What they provide is 56 regular parking spaces. The site plan that you see in front of you actually shows one RV parking space just before the exit from the drive-through onto Belleville Road on the south side of the site. Director Power, if you could just point out at that elongated RV uh, parking spot on the exit to the site. Yes, uh, while the applicant has tried to meet the intent of the ordinance, this is not a good place for an RV parking spot. The typical length of an RV can range anywhere from 20 to 40. And if it is an RV um, or trailer being dragged by a pickup truck or something, it's going to be even longer. If that vehicle does not park properly in that area, you're going to have the RV sticking out into the only exit drive of the drive through. It is likely to create a conflict and will end up likely blocking the exit from the site from the drive through. It is not a safe space to put an RV space in. Since the site is showing a surplus of about 18 parking spaces, our suggestion may be not two, but they can at least provide one RV parking space on the north side of the site where you see 11 parking spaces labeled along the north property line, maybe a few parking spaces can be eliminated to create a parallel parking space for an RV. The applicant has surplus vehicle parking spaces. Providing one space for an RV would be suitable for the site because it's right off the freeway too. So the planning commission does have the flexibility to either waive both of the spaces or allow for one space rather than two. Um, it is up to you. However, since the site is in close proximity to the freeway, we believe uh, expecting RV vehicles to pull into the site is not a stretch of the imagination. So maybe the one RV spot could be striped as a parallel parking space along the north property line rather than shown on the site plan in front of you. With regard to loading, sp uh, loading space, there is one loading space shown on the rear of the building. Going in and out of that loading space will require use of the main drive aisle. Uh, the applicant has stated that deliveries will take place at off-peak hours, um, which is fine. 
Uh, but we do have concerns whether a truck can actually get into that space and out. So we need to see a little bit of a turn radius diagram to see if that space is accessible. Under B-Rod, bicycle parking spaces are, a bicycle rack is required for the site. And the applicant has got a bicycle rack in front of the building, which can accommodate five bikes, meeting the ordinance standards. And the applicant has done a really good job working on the landscape plan for the site. Uh, they have been through several rounds, and at this time, they have revised the landscape plan considerably in order to meet all of the landscape requirements in the ordinance. They are providing required number of trees, shrubs, decorative landscaping. It is going to be a well-landscaped site when it is done. One of the requirements under the Bree Rod is to provide usable open space amenities. Now, the site plan includes a stamped concrete patio, two picnic tables and benches on the east side of the building so people can sit outside and eat. Manufacturer's details for the furniture have been included, but that furniture does not meet the standards of what we require for a B-Rod district. It's basically a plastic trash can with which any strong wind can actually blow over. Uh, the kind of furniture that needs to be provided here should be consistent with what is required in the downtown Belleville Road overlay district. So the applicant needs to revise their furniture design to match the BROD district requirements. The proposed tree removal plan is shown. Um, the site plan proposes a removal of uh, two trees on the site with a total caliper count of 25, uh, 26 inches. And the applicant is proposing replacement um, for those they initially said. However, uh, the applicant's response letter states that the two trees don't appear on the replacement list. That is, they are actually trees that are not counted for removal. There is some amount of conflict whether these are trees that require replacement or not. The applicant needs to clarify one way or the other. It's a well landscape site. If replacement is not required, it needs to be clarified. If replacement is required, it needs to be provided. The stormwater upgrades to the site are subject to review by the township engineer. The applicant has submitted a photometric plan for the site and the, all of the fixtures uh, and the light intensity on the sign is within ordinance limits. We had previously recommended the installation of decorative light pole only at the entrance and exit of the site along the site's uh, street frontage, Belleville Road frontage per b -Rod design guidelines. The applicant's response was, I quote, as stated, as existing light poles are being refreshed and new more aesthetically pleasing heads are being installed, the installation of new decorative light poles will not be added at this time. The applicant is extensively remodeling the entire site, adding a second drive-through lane in. There is really no reason to refurbish, uh, not replace just two of the poles on the site with the new decorative type of light pole that is required under the b rod when the entire site is being redone, it's not a deal breaker to put in two new light poles along the frontage. So we continue to go to our recommendation. With regard to architecture and building standards, um, the b -Rod district standards are applicable and the applicant has provided calculations indicating required glazing and materials on the building, which are consistent with the ordinance standards. The only concern we had is a red LED light band is shown on top of the building facade. The b -Rod does allow for accent lighting or uplighting of buildings to enhance the building's architectural features itself. Our concern is not the red by itself. Our concern is, is this red an accent feature for the building or is it a part of a corporate branding requirement? That needs to be clarified. Even if the red band is retained, we have a little reservation about whether it can be an LED lit band because it's not I don't know that it's working as an accent to the building elevation itself, unless the applicant can show us photographs of other buildings where this LED band light acts as an accent for the architectural features of the building and not just a Burger King corporate uh, part of the corporate signage. With regard to dumpster, uh, dumpster is shown on the west side of the building. The details provided are incomplete. So I cannot make out whether it would meet the ordinance uh, standards at this time. Our ordinance requires steel reinforced wooden gates. The applicant is proposing Trex gates. Um, in recent times, I have seen Trex gates used on dumpsters and they look a lot more durable and attractive than wooden gates. So should the planning commission choose to, you can allow for the substitution of the wooden gates with the Trex gates. 
but this is something director power and myself discussed as maybe something we can modify in our zoning ordinance to allow for it finally with regard to signage there is a 35 foot wide pylon sign along the site's bevel road frontage uh, which is an existing non-conforming structure and sign that township typically encourages non-conforming signs to be brought into compliance with the site but since the applicant is not ordering the sign in any way and it's an existing legal non-conforming sign at this time, we are okay with the applicant leaving it as is. Um, the applicant has shown wall signage. A little bit of clarification is required on the sign area facing Belleville Road in order to determine whether it meets the ordinance standards. In addition to wall and pylon signs, the ordinance also has specific requirements for drive-through lane menu board signs. The applicant has got a sign packet which does not comply. While the signs include various dimensions, the actual sign area needs to be noted on there. It's, it's a little difficult to figure out which dimensions to use to actually compute the sign area versus the base area. The menu boards also need to be labeled one and two for ease of reference. And a monument sign is required to have a 24 inch wide base as the sign. Both the order boards, which basically are technically monument signs with a base and a sign, both of them do not comply at this time. Also, one of the menu board signs is taller than eight feet, which is not permitted by the ordinance. So basically, the sign packet needs to be revised significantly. The incorporation, Belleville Road overlay district requirements for amenities and incorporation of uh, public seating, street furniture. The applicant is meeting the intent of the ordinance, but as I had mentioned previously, the furniture style proposed is, is not suited for the BROD district and doesn't meet the ordinance. So the furniture needs to be replaced with an alternate design. The applicant has worked with the township quite a bit to come this far in their project. There are still several things that need to be addressed, but nothing that would actually hold them up to proceeding to the next step. So our recommendation at this time would be for planning commission to grant preliminary site plan approval to Burger King located at 11550 Belleville Road subject to the seven conditions that are listed in the Mekana review letter dated September 21st of 2021. I would be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Ms. Krishnan. We'll go directly to the um, report from Fishbeck, Mr. Kamer. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I will be reading from our September 21st, 2021 letter uh, for the Burger King parking lot uh, reconstruction, preliminary site plan review. Uh, as far as engineering feasibility goes, um, this is a rather straightforward uh, review as the applicant indicates no proposed changes to the existing water system, nor the existing sanitary sewer service. Uh, the applicant is making some parking lot modifications. Um, however, the plans do not indicate, and the applicant does not indicate making any proposed changes to the existing stormwater system. The existing stormwater system essentially collects runoff from the parking lot and the roof of the building, um, collects uh, and discharges or extends around the building and then discharges into <clears throat> the roadside ditch um, near the southeast corner of the Excuse property. Me. Excuse yep. me, I'm so sorry. This is Medina Atchison. Um, can you please change my name back to uh, Medina Atchison versus Craig Atchison? I'm sorry. I don't know if you guys realized. Um, I, I, every you guys all froze up. I'm not sure what happened, but I lost all communication. Um, last I heard, video was talking um, about uh, the landscaping, the dumpster, the trucks, the signs. Um, I left. Okay. Um, Thanks, Medina. I just want to, um, I, my name is Craig Atchison. I'm sorry about that. Okay. I, I'm going to suggest that we take maybe just a couple minute uh, recess. Everybody stay where you are. Don't run away. Um, and let's see if we can't figure out what's going on technically and get things straightened out. And Director Power, if you'll let us know when um, when we're ready to resume. Sure. And in the meantime, I might recommend just turning video off as a first line of defense against uh, any connectivity issues you have. Um, but yes, we can reconvene shortly. Thank you. 
You're like up next, but it's going to be like 20 minutes. All right, okay. we'll come back to the meeting now and let's see if we've got everyone and they can hear and see. Better? Yes. Sorry about that. Great. Okay. Well, thanks for letting us know how we know that, <laughs> that, that you weren't able to follow along. So, um, if everyone else is, is, is okay with it, I think since Commissioner Atchison was with us through Ms. Krishnan's review up through the dumpster, um, I'm going to ask Ms. Krishnan, so I'm interrupting Mr. Kamer, and I apologize. I'm going to ask Ms. Krishnan to just briefly mention the last couple of items in her letter, and then we'll go directly to Fishbeck's review. Um, so a little redundancy. Madam Chair? Okay. It looks like we are still missing Cali Bar as well. Okay, we don't have Cali back. Uh, through through the chair, I let Kelly know how to call in. It looks like she is back. She's just got her video off right now. And uh, just by the way, if you're if you're having a sluggish connection, you you might just try turning your video off uh, at first because sometimes that helps me to uh, my internet to work better when I'm on Zoom. So Kelly Barr is here. She just does, has her video off right now. Okay. Thank you. I, just, I will quickly summarize uh, the points from dumpster onwards for Commissioner Atchison. So uh, with regard to dumpster, the applicant is proposing a dumpster with is, the ordinance requires steel reinforced wooden gates. The applicant's proposal is to provide Trex gates. The planning commission can grant that deviation. Mm -hmm believe the Trex gates are a suitable substitution because they're more durable. With regard to signage, the property has an existing non-conforming pylon sign, which the applicant is not touching. Uh, so we are fine with it being retained as is. They do need to provide additional information about the wall sign that faces Belleville Road. And there are two menu board signs, additional information is needed because they appear to exceed what the ordinance requires. Finally, with regard to Belleville Road overlay district, they have provided the outdoor seating area and other amenities. However, the furniture design needs to be replaced in accordance with the BROD requirements. Based on our review, uh, we are recommending preliminary site plan approval for Burger King subject to the seven conditions that are listed in our September 21st review letter. That, great. that was all of my review. That's great. Thanks, Ms. Krishnan. Mr. Kamer, you wanna um, walk us through again? We don't have uh, 
a lot of comments since there's not much changes, but hit the highlights for us, please. Sure, not a problem. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, as, uh, as I mentioned previously, uh, we're reading from our September 21st review letter uh, for the Burger King parking lot reconstruction plan. Uh, general, there are some minor general comments that we had, uh, but for the most part, this plan uh, does not change the engineering and infrastructure of the site as there are no changes to the existing water service and no changes to the existing sanitary sewer service. The stormwater uh, collection is done by an existing system uh, on site that collects the parking lot and roof runoff and discharges in a in the roadside into the roadside ditch to the southeast of the property. Um, the existing system appears to be metered by a restricted four inch pipe prior to discharging into this roadside ditch. And they propose no changes to the existing stormwater system, just uh, any, any catch basin adjustments if need be, but no actual underground work with the system. Um, the main concern that we have with a site uh, similar to this is like is that we like to see no zero net change to the overall paved area of the site. And the applicant has demonstrated this as part of their plans by adding islands and adding some grassed areas where um, in, in place of areas where they're adding pavement. So currently they are at a zero net change to their paved versus unpaved surface uh, of the site. The main concern that we have is the proposed asphalt that they're planning on adding to the site is two inches uh, over an eight inch aggregate base. The township engineering standards require a three inch uh, asphalt uh, minimum for all commercial or industrial parking lots, um, which is an easy change for the applicant. Um, other than that, the applicant uh, must uh, adhere to all soil erosion and sedimentation control uh, guidelines in accordance with the engineering standards and determine if a Wayne County permit is required, which based on the size of the job and proximity to any streams, lakes, or um, open water, they should not be required. So at this time, um, Fishbeck recommends the Planning Commission grant the Burger King parking lot reconstruction uh, preliminary plan approval for engineering feasibility subject to the comments listed in our September 21st, 2021 letter. I'm happy to answer any questions anybody has. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Kamer. And Director Power, a fire marshal review. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, the fire marshal has stated uh, he's kept uh, to the original comments uh, that were submitted in uh, April for this project. Um, the plans uh, as submitted are approved with some exceptions that fire department access will be maintained from construction. Um, that uh, accumulations of combustible waste material, dust, and debris uh, shall be removed from the structure in its immediate vicinity at the end of each work shift or more frequently as necessary for safe operations, uh, and that the review and approval by the authority having jurisdiction shall not relieve the applicant of the responsibility of compliance with the codes that are referenced in the letter. Excellent. Thank you. Let's go right to our applicant. Anything that you would like to share with us about your plans, um, how your business is doing, and any responses to the recommendations we've had tonight? Yes, good afternoon. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, my name is Christopher Blurden. I work with Interplan LLC, 220 uh, Central Boulevard, Altamont Springs, Florida. We are the civil engineers and the architects that have worked on this project. We appreciate uh, all the help that the staff has offered us and the recommendations that they have given us, particularly Mr. Power and uh, as well, uh, the rest of the staff there, as well as the city's consultants. We, uh, in general, I wanted to go through some of the, uh, uh, myself, I wanted to go through some of the site plan uh, recommendations that were uh, included along with the comments. Uh, that would be included with this recommendation for approval. 
Uh, we in general have no uh, objections to any of the proposed conditions, uh, specifically the additional RV semi parking space because we do have a surplus of parking out there at the existing Burger King. Uh, we have no issue with providing a larger uh, RV slash semi truck parking space. Uh, we will remove an additional five or six parking spaces to make that happen. So we have no, no uh, objections to that requirement. Uh, essentially, and uh, as Mr. Power mentioned, you know, this site is not, uh, we're certainly upgrading the landscaping. I think we're proposing an additional uh, almost over 40 trees total. So I, I certainly agree with Ms. Krishna that this is, uh, this is gonna be a, a well landscaped site once we're done with it. Uh, I certainly think this is you know, an attractive site to begin with, but it's even going to be more attractive once we're done. Uh, so I don't think we have any issues with the uh, the truck maneuvering plan. We will provide that as part of the final engineering approval. We are adding some landscape islands, but in general, the overall traffic flow is not changing. Uh, the outdoor furniture design, uh, we will be addressing that. And I think our architecture department had maybe have a, a comment or two to make on that. Uh, I did want to mention the, the only, I think, specific objection that we have to any of the site recommendations, the recommendations for approval would be the uh, additional decorative light poles. Uh, there is an existing decorative light pole out in the right of way of Belleville Road that is uh, a part of the, of the existing streetscape there along Belleville Road. Uh, it looks very attractive. Uh, all of our light poles are interior to our property and they are uh, right now they're, you know, they're, they're basically steel poles on a concrete metal base or a concrete base, two foot or three foot concrete base. Uh, the nearest pole that we have to the right of way is uh, approximately 30 feet. So it's, it's not necessarily very visible from the right of way. But one thing that, that we are replacing on these poles is currently they're almost a floodlight style fixture that is pointing down at a uh, more or less a 45 degree angle at the parking lot. We are proposing to replace those fixtures, those luminaires, with a uh, what's basically called a full cutoff or a, a dark sky compliant fixture. So those will now be pointed instead of a 45 degree angle pointed at the parking lot uh, at an angle. Those will now be pointed at a 90 degree angle directly down at the street level or at the parking lot level. So there will be no spillage of that light onto adjacent properties or onto the right of way, onto the public right of way. So what we would recommend, what we would request from the board is that uh, the existing poles are allowed to be uh, basically refurbished. We would paint the bases, paint the poles, and we would replace the luminaires with new LED fixtures that are again, pointed directly at a 90 degree angle at the parking lots, replacing those, those old, almost floodlight style fixtures. So we would request that that condition of approval be removed for the, uh, the decorative fixtures, because again, the, there's perfectly functional fixtures that are there today. They wouldn't necessarily be visible from the right of way, even if we did replace them. Uh, so we would request that we just replace the luminaires as proposed. Uh, as the city's consultant mentioned, we are not increasing impervious area. We are adding uh, two very large landscape islands in the parking lot where currently I think we have 20 to 25 parking spaces in a row. We're proposing to put in landscape islands in the middle of those parking rows to kind of beautify the parking lot and to plant trees in those parking, those, those landscape islands. Uh, so we have no addition, no uh, objections to that requirement. Uh, and I did want to mention real quick, I don't think this was mentioned as a condition of approval, uh, but I know the city's consultant mentioned this, the Trex dumpster gate. Uh, I understand that the board would have to recommend that for approval. Uh, Trex, you know, from 10 feet away, it's a it's a composite wood product. It lasts much longer than normal wood. It looks basically just like normal wood, uh, but it lasts much longer, especially in the climate up there. And as well, we're our office, our main office is in Florida. Uh, our climate down here, if you put in a wooden dumpster gate, it will be disintegrated within two years. And I'm sure it's not much better up there with freezing weather. Uh, we found that a composite gate you know, with the Trex material or something similar works much better for long-term maintenance. Uh, it'll, it'll still be there, you know, five or 10 years from now, whereas a wood gate will be falling apart within two or three. So we would request that that be approved as part of this project as well. 
Uh, and I think our architectural department, uh, either Uli or uh, Andrea wanted to speak real quick regarding the, uh, the two or three remaining comments regarding the architecture of the building. Thank you. Great, thanks Mr. Gordon. Yes, good evening. Uh, my name is Uli Brandstetter. I'm the architectural program manager uh, at Interplan. I work with Chris uh, and thank you for everybody providing comment and uh, assistance throughout this process. It's been a little while that we've been working on this project as an existing uh, partner and um, facilitator of food supply in uh, your beautiful area. We are excited to be able to remodel this place and provide an upgraded version and uh, have a better customer experience as well. We are, uh, I wanted to address the comment uh, regarding the uh, trash can that we had provided. It has a plastic lid, but is a weatherstone concrete um, trash can similar to what McDonald's and Tim Hortons are um, having on their properties. We can replace it with a metal trash can if that is what is re being requested. Um, we don't have a problem um, matching whatever is required in regards to specifications. We had, uh, I do believe, requested some information regarding the specifications uh, of those items um, to be able to match that request. And presumably we can uh, work through that and just get it added to the drawings as necessary. Uh, I also wanted to address the LED uh, light band item. Uh, it is not just a corporate feature. It is also providing uh, continue, continuing support to the linear elements of the building. We are prepared to not have it lit if that is the request, um, but we would prefer the red element to stay in place as it also breaks up the facade a little bit and provides more visual interest. And uh, I do believe that would address um, most of the architectural items since we've worked through everything else already. So thank you so much. Thank you, thank you both. That's very helpful. Um, I'm gonna see if there's anyone in the audience to speak to this agenda item. Uh, through the chair, there is one comment in the chat and it's from Stephen Dark. Uh, the comment is uh, regarding Burger King. I'm disappointed that the applicant will no longer be required to provide cross access with the property to its south. The site to the south is already prepped for cross access. And I believe that some sort of compromise should be made in order to create a more complete, cohesive appearance and function for both of the properties. For example, if the flow of traffic in the Burger King parking lot is a concern, perhaps there could be uh, at least be a one-way passage through. That is the comment from uh, Mr. Dark. I don't see any other hands raised. Thanks. So um, let's see, we can go to planning commission uh, questions and comments, or we can go back and ask Ms. Christian if she has a response to what the applicant has raised in terms of some of the recommendations. What's your pleasure? Here. I would uh, like to hear what Ms. Krishna says uh, in response to the comments from the applicant. With my, especially with the, the modifications to the lighting requests and uh, the other items. Okay, let's do that. Ms. Krishnan, can you tell us um, yes. with the, the positive responses from our applicant um, where you're at with, with what, what you recommend going forward? Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'm fine with the applicant installing the Trex gates. And as I said before, I think these Trex gates look more attractive than wooden gates. I've seen a few done recently on fast food restaurants and uh, they would stand the test of time really well. So we have, I'm fine with supporting the request for putting in Trex gates. With regard to the architecture, as long as the red band is not lit, I think it will look fine. It will look fine as part of the building. The moment you add the banding in that, it gives the appearance of neon. So I believe the applicant stated that they would like to have the red band, but it won't be lit. And I am fine with that suggestion. I would recommend that the trash can definitely be changed to something that is a specification for the DDA. This is almost at the Southern end of the DDA district. So it, if the entire site is being redone, I would prefer rather than have a concrete trash can with a plastic lid on it, that they stick to the benches and 
touch sheet details from the DDA. The applicant indicated they didn't have a problem doing that. So we will make sure the township provides them with the details. I think the single main concern the applicant had was with regard to the lighting. Um, as the applicant was talking, I did have a chance to pull up the ADL Street View images of this Burger King. And there is a large decorative light pole along the street frontage. Uh, if Director Power would let me share my screen for a second, I would be happy to share that if I can go here. Okay, share. Okay, thank you. So this is the view of the site and there is a DDS decorative light pole over here. The applicant is basically saying they would like to paint, keep these poles and replace just this fixture head um, to make it uh, not a flood light, but a downward directed light. I think that would be acceptable. There is um, a significant pole. For some reason, I was under the impression this pole was further on that side, not directly in front of their site. Since there is a decorative light pole here, putting another light pole over here and here would not make sense since there is the next light pole is right here. So I'm fine with the applicant's request to reuse the pole. However, uh, I wouldn't merely suggest directing these downward to the parking lot because these adjustable heads are notoriously non-adjustable. They end up going back up anyway and being floodlights. So I would recommend that the fixture top be something that is used in the newer parking lots and is fully downward direct. So as long as that is replaced, I'm fine with the applicant's request for not having to put two new light poles in. That would be fine. Okay, great. Thank you. That takes care of a number of points. I'll ask, are there any other questions or comments from the I'm sorry, Madam Chair, point of order. What, what were you asking? Any other questions or comments from the commission? Uh, I do have a, some questions and comments. The, Let's hear it. Ms. Christian, you're, so you are not, you, you don't want them to replace the interior property uh, floodlight, merely retrofit it. And then I would assume that it would be submitted with a photo metric for a final site plan and would have to meet our requirements, right? Yes. The applicant will submit an updated photometric plan and a detail of the fixture that they're going to use on that pole. In, have we seen a photometric plan yet, preliminary? Yes, we have seen a photometric plan and it basically shows that the site is well in compliance with the requirements for the different. I, I didn't see it on the photometric plan or maybe I, I wasn't thinking to look for it, but do we have photometrics on what this lit red band is? is what, what's the lumen output of the, the LED band? And is the current red band around the Burger King lit? Uh, maybe the applicant can answer yeah. that. I don't think the existing band is an illuminated band. It looks more like an accent uh, accent band as far as I can, I can see. I'll try to share my screen here. So yeah, as far as I can see, it does not look like an LED band. Uh, but if the applicant is not going to light it up, it's not going to affect the photometrics of the site. So we would be fine with it. Well, thanks for answering. I, I was wondering, I, I drive past the Burger King very frequently uh, as well. And for the life of me, I can't remember if that red band is lit. <laughs> I drove past it this afternoon, <laughs> this last night I drove past. I don't know if it's lit, uh, but if, if the applicant is okay with the lit portion of the red band being removed, uh, but leaving the red band on, then I think that is uh, that's an acceptable an acceptable solution. And your recommendation, recalled uh, in point four, was for uh, decorative B-rod light style poles at the two access drives. That your recommendation is now that the existing pole is the, the existing single BROD pole is okay. Yes. Yes. Correct. Uh, great. Uh, I do have a question about the site and uh, the water handling. I, I know, I can't tell you if that red band is lit at night, but I can tell you that the current parking lot is frequently very wet. Uh, I don't know if that's a problem with the 
uh, current drainage or if that drainage is going to be updated as part of this parking lot, uh, you know, modification. I was wondering if the applicant or Mr. Cameron, if you could uh, discuss the current the current situation and what it will be going forward after the construction. Yes, uh, this is Chris Blurton with Interplan. I'd be, be happy to address your concerns. Uh, my understanding is there is an existing detention system which basically stores uh, stormwater runoff temporarily. It's underground underneath the parking lot, temporarily stores stormwater runoff and slowly discharges that runoff to an existing swale to the southeast of the property that runs along Belleville Road. Uh, Obviously, the site's been there for a little while. Uh, we weren't proposing to upgrade the existing underground system, but I think one thing that we could do that would certainly help the situation would be, because the, the site has been there for quite some time, uh, what we could do is potentially to uh, actually bring a vacuum truck out to the site and vacuum out that existing stormwater system, the existing storm drain system. So that would take care of any built up debris, sediment, or anything else that's entered the system over the, the intervening year since it was constructed, if that, if that would help. Uh, Mr. Cameron, any comment on that? Yeah, um, I think uh, Mr. Blurton is is correct in saying that over time, these detention systems, these underground um, systems get clogged with debris and leaves and sediment. And more times they're not, than not, they're not maintained uh, properly. So what was once a restricted four inch pipe is now a restricted you know, one inch pipe. And so when you do get heavy rainfall, uh, the site itself or the on-site drainage and detention system will then overflow or, you know, be, but be, be contained within the site. Um, because they're not increasing the impervious area of the site, um, it's not a requirement for them to, to upgrade the system. However, we could put in our recommendation and when we get into engineering feasibility, um, we can add in a requirement for them to do a thorough cleaning of the system of the outlet and any of the structures within the parking lot to make sure that it is running properly as designed. Through, through the chair, I, I would like to see that requirement in the, in the final. I, Think the site uh, if there's no re-engineering required all it needs is a clean out great that's what we should require uh, i have no other questions at this time thank you great sounds good thanks commissioner Starr. other commissioners questions or comments all right are we ready to take action on this would be a preliminary site plan approval is there a motion madam chair um, I move to grant the applicant Interplan LLC preliminary site plan approval to construct a secondary drive through lane at the property located at 11550 Belleville Road. Based on the analysis and subject to the conditions detailed in the McKenna report dated September 21st, 2021, the Fishbeck report dated September 21st, 2021, the Van Buren Fire Department report dated April 27th, 2021. The uh, Planning Commission Memorandum dated October 6th, 2021, uh, with some modifications to the requirements where we are looking at allowing a modification to the decorative light pole requirement where the applicant will be allowed to reuse the existing pole and that we are requesting a fully downward directing light. Uh, that we will permit the red band on the building so long as it is not lit. Um, and that we are allowing the Trex gate modification as well to uh, the dumpster storage. And that prior to final, we would like to see some discussion on, on, future, uh, on a future review regarding the uh, stormwater maintenance as well. Excellent. Thanks, Commissioner Kelly. Their support. Support. Thanks, Mr. Atchison. And it's a roll call vote, please. Jeff Char. Yes. 
Brian Kelly? Yes. Kelly Barr? Yes. Medina Ashenson? Yes. Brian Cullen? Yes. Sherry Budd? Yes. Carol Thompson? Yes. Thank you. You have preliminary site plan approval. Thanks to the applicant for working with us through some of the issues tonight. And we look forward to seeing you back for a final. Thank you, commissioners. We appreciate your help. Thank have you, everybody. Night. Good night. Great. All right, we are to item four. This is the temporary land use approval for Atchison Ford. And um, Commissioner Atchison, I believe you have a request for us. Uh, yes, uh, through the chair. I uh, am making a motion that I be recused from case number 21-027, temporary land use approval for Atchison Ford. The applicant happens to be my spouse. So I will be turning off my microphone and monitor. Okay, great. Thank you. Thanks. We'll take your motion. Is there support for the motion? There's support. I will, I will support. support. Thanks, uh, Commissioner Bud. And a roll call vote, please. Brian Kelly? Yes. Kelly Barr? Yes. Brian Cullen? Yes. Sherry Bud? Yes. Carol Thompson? Yes. So thanks. Oh, Jeff, I missed one. Jeff Jar, I apologize. <laughs> Apology accepted. I'm a yes. <laughs> for uh, Commissioner Atchison's request to be recused and we'll go forward. Uh, she'll come back and join us. The applicant Atchison Ford on behalf of owner Sparty Investments LLC is requesting a new approval of a temporary land use permit to park turned in, leased and new vehicle inventory. The property is located at 8705 Belleville Road, Van Buren Township, Michigan, 48111. It is on the east side of Belleville Road and north of Tyler Road. And we have a review and report from Director Power. And I am muted. Okay, thank you, Madam Chair. I'll keep my comments uh, as brief as I can, uh, given the late hour, but thank you for summarizing this request. This is a request the Planning Commission has seen some version of for the past few years, uh, beginning in April of 2018. Uh, Atchison Ford began uh, seeking temporary land use approvals for uh, periods of one year roughly to have uh, leased and uh, uh, overflow vehicles parked at this site at 8705 Belleville Road. Um, I'd like to briefly summarize uh, some of the findings of this report, which I have to give credit to uh, the uh, Public Services Director Best and uh, my predecessor, uh, Director Akers, who did a lot of the initial analysis, as well as then uh, Fire Marshal McAnally uh, with the initial report, so it makes uh, reviewing this uh, pretty consistent and straightforward. So I'd just like to summarize a lot of those findings with just one uh, clarified condition on signage that I'll, I'll briefly go over. Um, so the site is, uh, we, we have to review uh, temporary land use standards under, under uh, section 7.120 of the Van Buren Township Zoning Ordinance. So to briefly summarize uh, what we're looking at in those standards, uh, first, we discuss uh, parking and access requirements. The parking and access was reviewed by uh, the town uh, public services department as well as the fire department. Uh, this is a gravel, existing gravel parking area that served a manufactured home sales site. It's uh, deemed sufficient to park the vehicles without creating negative impacts, um, and it provides adequate access for the fire department. The site has this existing gravel uh, that drains uh, through existing stormwater drainage. There's no substantial improvements or impervious surfaces that are being added. And so uh, there's really nothing to comment on with respect to drainage. Regarding compatibility with surrounding land uses, uh, there's vacant land to the west, a park area associated with a neighboring mobile home park to the east, um, a manufactured housing community to the north, and another commercially zoned site to the south. Uh, and this use is consistent with uh, the character of that area. Uh, there is a required 20-foot um, buffer for uh, the setback of the vehicles from the north property boundary uh, to maintain compatibility with that being a residential use, as well as 10-foot uh, setbacks from the front property line and south property line. 
There are no new buildings proposed. And so the requirements regarding the size, height, and type of construction for buildings uh, do not really apply. Uh, as I mentioned, there are uh, setbacks that are established to uh, provide uh, some buffers. Uh, there are really no um, specific required setbacks from a building standpoint because there's no building being proposed. But uh, it, as in the past, I will recommend the continuation of 10 foot uh, buffers from the front and south power lines, as well as 20 feet from the north and east. And um, what I skipped past is a comment that uh, vehicles parked in the front of the site should be oriented so their, uh, their lights continue to be away from um, the neighboring uh, properties, so oriented inward toward the lot. Uh, there are new, new, no new uh, utilities proposed. Uh, and because the site is basically unoccupied, there's no trash disposal that's required or sanitary facilities that are required. Uh, with your init initial application, the uh, hours of operation for this uh, vehicle parking to occur were from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, depending on the day, uh, it has closing hours of 6 p.m. and 3 p.m. So the applicant may want to just clarify if that's still the case. Uh, with respect to outdoor lighting and signage, um, there's no proposed site lighting. Uh, and then with respect to signage, in the past, we have said that there uh, should be a review by the Township uh, Planning and Economic Development Department regarding consistency with any signage with Article 11 of the Van Buren Township Zoning Ordinance. Now, to just expand on this a little bit, there is an existing uh, pole sign on the site. As the site is not being redeveloped at this time, and uh, with the site being maintained in good condition with this temporary land use, uh, I'd like to continue the recommendation that there's uh, the, the pole sign itself does not need to be removed at this time. There's no alteration around that sign, so there's no need to require removal. Uh, however, I would recommend as a condition that uh, the, any lettering that's related to uh, the old use on the site, the uh, central outlet homes, uh, if that, that could be removed or covered up uh, with a blank sign panel, I think that would be preferable just to have... Uh, that um, off-site or, or non-existent business uh, lettering removed. So that's one uh, minor change to the sign recommendations, but otherwise no other changes. Uh, and there are some additional comments with respect to licenses and permits, noise, odor, dust and glare, fire lanes and fire protection, uh, off-site impacts of traffic volumes, um, performance bonds, and other concerns around public safety, health, and welfare, which uh, I think are, uh, I think I can just summarize any comments that arise from those uh, categories in the recommended conditions of approval. Um, so I'll just summarize the recommended conditions of approval at this point. Uh, the first one is that the applicant shall maintain setbacks, which are consistent with the landscape buffering standards in the township's zoning ordinance, which are a uh, front setback of 10 feet uh, on the east side of the property, a uh, north side setback of 20 feet, a south side setback of 10 feet, and a rear or east side setback of 20 feet. Uh, vehicles parked immediately adjacent to Belleville Road shall be parked with the front of the vehicle facing away from Belleville Road and adjacent properties in order to avoid headlight glare. Uh, the, the site shall be maintained in a clean manner and trash will be properly disposed of. The hours of operation for the temporary vehicle parking area shall mirror the hours of operation for the Atchison Ford dealership. That any exterior lighting or signs be reviewed and approved by the Director of Planning and Economic Development for consistency with the zoning ordinance. Uh, that the applicant shall remove or cover any uh, sign panel that advertises a use that no longer exists. And that the temporary land use permit is valid for a period of one year ending in uh, October of uh, October 12th of 2022. Uh, with that, I defer to the applicant to uh, clarify any additional items they have for the Planning Commission or uh, to speak on any comments regarding my uh, report. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Director Powers. Let's hear from our applicant, Mr. Atchison. Atchison, are you able to join us? Mr. 
that uh, trying to give that a minute. I might make might make a call here. Okay, hold on, everyone. Hello, I am here. Excellent. Welcome. Um, Hello, we thanks have, for having me. Yep, we've heard um, Director Power recommendations. Um, looks good, but anything that you wanted to share with us um, or let us know about um, before we take um, action? I just, you know, it's, uh, it's kind of just business as usual there. I'm not really doing anything different. Um, I did do some improvements to the lot over the last 12 months. I did replace the fence all the way around. Um, the building, and I'm sorry, the building, the property, and um, I plan on still kind of keeping it up. I will probably get some more gravel down in there within the next 12 months to just try to make it look better. Um, haven't really been needing it. I'm not sure how m many vehicles I'll have on in the near future, but it, things change kind of uh, uh, week to week in my business right now, so I just want to be prepared in case I do need it. Um, but um, another thing, as far as the sign, I will be removing the, the complete sign on Saturday. I have that scheduled to get taken down completely, so the sign will no longer be on the property. Um, but that's really it, unless you have some questions for me. Everything is kind of uh, staying the same as it has for the last three years. Great. Thanks. Thanks, Mr. Atchison, and thanks for taking the whole sign down. That's really um, beyond what the recommendation was, but I think... I think you're right. It'll be an improvement to, to how the property looks. Um, and we're, we're glad to see that you're planning to be able to use the, the lot and hopefully business and supply chains and, and manufacturing will get back to um, where we all need it to be. So questions. I agree. Or, yeah, great. Questions or comments from um, any, the, anyone in the audience? 
or any planning commissioners for either staff or the applicant. Anything? Okay. See nobody in the audience. Great, thank you. And planning commissioners, all looks good. Are we ready to take action on this temporary land use? Is there a motion? Madam Chair. Mr. Chuck. I move to grant the applicant Atchison Ford on behalf of Owners Party Investments LLC, temporary land use approval to permit parking turned in lease and new vehicle inventory on the site located at 8705 Belleville Road, Van Buren Township, based on the analysis and subject to the conditions and recommendations detailed in the letter from staff dated October 1st, 2021. Excellent, thank you. Support, please. I'll support. Thank you, Mr. Cohen, your roll call vote, please. Sherry Budd? Yes. Brian Cullen? Yes. Kelly Barr? Yes. Brian Kelly? Yes. Jeff Jar? Yes. Cheryl Thompson? Yes. So we have your temporary land use approval, Mr. Atkinson, and we wish you all the best. All right, thank you for your, thanks. I really appreciate it. Have a good night. All right, you too. We are to some discussion topics tonight. This is item five. Let's call uh, Commissioner Atchison back into the meeting. Um, item five, discussion topic, zoning ordinance text amendment, outdoor dining and retail. And we have a presentation from staff, Director Power. I will respectfully ask the planning commission to just announce that this is a topic we are working on. We are trying to uh, codify some things that uh, have been revealed as part of the COVID pandemic that uh, consistent with what some of the other communities are doing. We want to make some of our, uh, allow the planning commission to consider um, some additional flexibility in our outdoor dining and um, retail options long-term. But for tonight, I would actually ask the planning commission to postpone any significant uh, discussion on this to the next available uh, meeting time slot with a target of uh, a recommendation for next year. So I, my recommendation at this time is for the planning commission to just uh, withdraw this from, a, from the agenda or, or postpone action. I don't think you're gonna have any argument, but I'll double check. Anybody agree? <laughs> Could we have a, a motion to formalize that, please? What's your pleasure? You want to postpone until a future meeting? Mm -hmm. I'm here. I'd move to postpone this agenda item to a future meeting as uh, determined by Director Power. Excellent. Madam Chair, I support that motion. <laughs> and a roll call vote, please. Medina Ashenson? Yes. Brian Cullen? Yes. Sherry Budd? Yes. Kelly Barr? Yes. Brian Kelly? Yes. Jeff Jar? Yes. Carol Thompson? Yes. So thank you. Thanks, Director Power. We look forward to hearing back. And you are also up for item six and seven. These are some administrative updates. First, the administrative site plan review update. <laughs> Automotive LLC. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, the, the building and planning, uh, the building department in within the public services department uh, regularly reviews reoccupancy of existing uh, building spaces. And if, if those um, reoccupancies, such as like in a strip mall, for example, don't uh, significantly change the use of the parking demand, they usually fly under the radar. There's a administrative zoning review that goes along with that, but you at the Planning Commission don't typically see those. Uh, and that's the case with what I'm introducing here as well, although I just wanted to make sure the Planning Commission um, knew uh, some, some general facts about it. It's uh, a large site uh, at 39635 South I-94 Service Drive um, that had at one time been owned by Wellington Steel. Uh, Wellington Steel next door has uh, now uh, turned, turned over to emerging advanced products and they've sold this uh, large industrial lot next to them. And just to update you on the plan commission, the uh, occupant that is moving into that space is uh, 
uh, doing permit work to uh, make the space ready for uh, battery storage and battery testing without any uh, any heavy use of uh, batteries or, or disassembly of batteries. So basically a, a warehousing use is moving into that building. Um, and I'm glad to answer any uh, questions you have as that project moves along and they get closer to occupancy. Uh, but just want to provide a brief administrative update on that. And there's really no, there's no site changes uh, save for some minor adjustments around the perimeter of the building. Great. Thank you. Let's go right to item seven, the administrative update on the Camping World Redevelopment. Yep, thank you. Uh, and this is a project that the Planning Commission did review. I just think it's uh, at a point where it's important to provide an update to, to give you a, a idea of what's going on at that site. Um, this project had a, gained final site plan approval in December of 2020. And since that time, there have been um, adjustments conceptualized by the applicant, by the uh, Camping World team, where they had at one point talked about uh, just retrofitting and maintaining a portion of their building on the uh, east side uh, that they had been approved to remove. Uh, you might remember that on a Planning Commission agenda in June, there was uh, some discussion of this. Uh, all of the applicant had withdrawn uh, being on that agenda formally, and there was no ap action taken. Uh, and so indeed, the uh, project has reverted back to its original scope. And so I just want to give the Planning Commission an update that uh, in late September, there was uh, demolition on the east wing of that building. They've basically uh, gone back to their originally approved plans. Uh, and if there's any other changes to the plans that involve um, site work uh, that, that deviate from the plans that were approved last December, the Planning Commission will know about those. But um, basically what you're, what you're seeing now is just uh, pursu uh, pursuant to the original scope of the plans. Um, and I will update the Planning Commission further if there's any other formal changes requested. Great. Thanks so much. It was a, a question to see all of a sudden part of the building come down and we thought they had not been a change. So good to know. We are to general discussion and updates in tonight's meeting. Uh, so updates and announcements. Director Power, and then we'll ask for anyone else general discussion. Yes, I uh, I do have an update. It's a it's a sad update for all of us here. Um, mm -hmm. We understand that uh, you, Madam Chair, are uh, resigning from the Planning Commission and moving out of the township. And um, I just want to say that for my very brief time horizon here in the township, it has been a total honor to work with you. You've made my transition into Van Buren Township as smooth as it could possibly be by. Uh, helping to steer these meetings in a very professional um, and uh, you know emotionally intelligent manner that uh, respects all vantage points and keeps things on track at the same time. It's a very uh, unique skill set and you're just a, a great person to talk to and commiserate with. So I really appreciated working with you uh, and everybody here I think has had even more time with you. So I'm sure uh, everybody would like to speak their piece as well, but we, we wish you all the luck and I'll turn it over to anybody else that would like to talk. Thank you, Dan, thanks a lot. Carol, okay. I've, I'm sorry to see you go. I was looking forward to you being my mentor on what was coming forward in the Planning Commission. Um, wow. I've known you for quite a while, but uh, it's been a pleasure for the short time that I have worked with you. Good luck to you. I hope you enjoy the North. Thank you very much. I would, uh, I would like to add that I am fortunate that you were my mentor. Uh, and I want to share a very brief story. When I, when I first started on the Planning Commission, I would often ask questions, but uh, my track record for making motions uh, or speaking up at, at the time a motion was required was pretty low. Uh, and Carol pulled me aside uh, one evening and said, you know, if you don't start making those motions, Commissioner Jar, I'm going to start assigning items to you. And I'll just say, I guess I showed her. <laughs> Thank you, Carol. It's been a pleasure working with you. You came right up and raised the bar. <laughs> Thank you, Carol. I, uh, I remember meeting you when I first started my planning career. Van Buren was my first client. 
and you were the planning commission chair. And uh, I was so nervous when I first started presenting. And like Dan said, you just made it so easy, so seamless. Over the years, I have attended countless planning commission meetings at countless different clients. This is one of the best run planning commission meetings. Like Dan said, you respect everybody's point of view, give, give everybody an opportunity to speak and you just run the meeting so beautifully. You, you are just a wonderful commissioner to work in and it's my honor to have worked with you for this long. Thank you. Thank you. I did not know that we were your first client and, uh, and you've I done guess. excellent work. An absolute class act, big shoes to follow, big shoes to follow. It's been a complete pleasure. I'm very sad, um, but I wish you well. You'll definitely be missed. Thank you. Thank you, Medea. I'll miss you too. Carol, thank you for everything you've done. It's been a true pleasure working with you and witnessing how much you care about the community and the residents and everything going on. You've been such a good mentor and a good friend and put up with so many times that I've made mistakes and, and helped guide me through it. Uh, I will miss you a lot, uh, but I know that this is going to be an amazing opportunity for you and your family. Well, thanks, Brian. And really, um, I don't remember you making any big mistakes, but I do um, remember saying something wrong or reading <laughs> wrong at me and going, oh, I made a mistake, but you know, it's really the, the body of the work that lasts beyond all of us. And we have so much to be proud of. I think um, it has really, truly been exceptional to have the opportunity to serve with you all, to work with great commissioners, incredible staff, and, and the consultants. Um, I have learned a lot, and for the most part, I have enjoyed every minute of it. And I wanted to say thank you also. Most beautiful bouquet of flowers arrived this afternoon from you all. And thank you. It was just really delightful to, to, to know that you that I have your heart the way you have my heart. Madam Madam Chair. Uh, Madam Chair. Yes. You you define the term, Madam Chair. Yeah. With grace with professionalism and with your experience and your patience. Uh, I first met you, you were my neighbor and, and then you became my, my boss. And, and now I hope that I can consider you one of my friends and you will always be my Madam Chair. Thank you so much. Thanks, man. Yeah, we're definitely friends. We've been friends for a long time um, through thick and thin. <laughs> I, I, I think most people that know me know I hate to say goodbye. So I'm not going to say goodbye. And Carol, <clears throat> it's been years. And um, I just wish you the best. And you have been a dear friend. Um, you've helped us all as we've served on the Planning Commission. And you mean a whole lot to a lot of us. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I already have spoken to you about my expectations that you will come and visit, but of course you are all welcome anytime. We'll, I'll get, I'll get <clears throat> information out so that you know how to stay in touch, but if you're passing through Elk Rapids, please consider, consider calling and stopping by um, and we can catch up. But I also know that I am leaving the future of Van Buren Township in just the best, most caring, excellent hands. And so I'm, I feel like uh, it, it's, it's my time to go, but everything is gonna move forward and it's gonna continue to get better and you'll continue to grow and do well. All right, not all that. I don't wanna <laughs> cut you off, but does anybody have anything else for general discussion? I need to ask anyone in the audience for general discussion. Not seeing any hands raised. Any other burning issues at this rather late hour? I did not break a record on time tonight. <laughs> I think I think another sad thing, I think another sad thing that we have to let everybody know, and I'm sure they probably do know, is that we are going to lose Matt Best, and he is leaving us. 
And I think that makes us all just as sad. We wish him good luck in his next endeavor. He's been good for Van Buren Township and he is going to be greatly missed. Most definitely. Yeah, Most definitely. Absolutely. Lost someone else's game, but um, hopefully he's still a neighbor and uh, and he'll be he'll be around to help celebrate successes in Van Buren Township as we go forward. Best of luck, uh, Matt. I'm very sad to see you go too. So thank you for all your service to our township. Definitely thank left a mark here on our hearts. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, Matt, you know, I was with you on the Environmental Commission, too, and I have to say your, your knowledge and depth of knowledge on the environmental issues is just, it's stunning, and, and working with you has been great. I, I, I wasn't aware that you were uh, leaving, uh, but uh, hey, best of luck to you on, on whatever you're doing, and it's been a pleasure working with you as well. Uh, thank you. And it's been, it's been a pleasure working with you and I really appreciate all the things that you've helped me with uh, over the years. You, you've done such a great, great job with the community, great job with everything. And it's been it's a pleasure working with you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, Matt, I didn't realize you were leaving as well. I just met you personally at the open house a couple months ago and I really appreciate your insight and what you had to say and uh, good luck on your future endeavors. We're gonna miss you here. Thank you. Well, there's a whole world of uh, mentorship and help that Matt's provided me just with planning commission meetings, let alone all the other stuff that we do day to day at Township Hall. So Matt will be very much missed. Yeah. You are in good hands with Dan Power. Thank you. We want to be too sad. We want to uh, think about opportunities and possibilities as we all move forward and just be grateful for the times that we did have together. Um, and, there was, I, I, and there were some uh, struggles, but for the most part, it has all been very, very enjoyable and very productive. Um, if there's nothing else, I'll ask for I, a motion. Whoops. I will be going up, I'll be going up to Elk Rapids to see what you've done with the place. <laughs> <laughs> you might have to do more than one trip. I think it, the <laughs> <laughs> All right, great, that would be wonderful. All right, is there a motion to adjourn? I'll make the motion, Madam Chair. A motion will be adjourned. Thanks, Commissioner Cullen. Support? Support. Commissioner Atkinson. And no roll call vote, just everyone who agrees say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, Madam Thank Chair. You. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. When I see you. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Thank you.